I can honestly say I love playing in the city of Chicago. You know, the fans, the fans are great. I think we have the best fans in the league. And I noticed that from day one, you know, my rookie year when we started off, I think it was 0-9. And, and fans would still, you know, be there cheering for us and everything like that. And, you know, they, they rallied us all the way to the playoffs. And, you know, I love them for that. So I, I wouldn't want to play anywhere else but Chicago. No power over me. Let nothing keep you from a delicious new Dunkin' Donuts Sausage Supreme Omelet. Not even that human interest story. America runs on Dunkin'. Stop by Dunkin' Donuts and try the new Sausage Supreme Omelet breakfast sandwich and coffee combo. We now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. And he's taller than you are as a football player. That's, that's just a small, diminutive man right there. And yet, he's got a big a heart as anybody on the field. And uh, he, apparently his legs are big enough because he's done a great job helping Phil Horvath out with that offense. Numbers on Horvath, and one thing Illinois, Northern Illinois wants to do is try to get more balanced. They'll try to get balanced right here down the field. Perez is down there, and that play is broken up back there on the coverage for Ball State. Number eight, Trey Bice, his first game of the season. Rob had hernia surgery, had a great week of practice, according to head coach Brady Hoke, and here are the backs and receivers, brought to you by your Metro Detroit Ford dealers for Northern Illinois, Phil Horvath, the aforementioned Garrett Wolf, Davis, Carter, and Perez, the wideouts, and a very good tight end, Jake Nordine up front, Doug Free, 6'7", they call him Doug Freak, leading the <laughs> offensive line for Northern Illinois. Second down and 10 for the Huskies. Garrett Wolf will touch the ball for the first time in the game. And the Ball State Cardinals do an outstanding job. Negative yards on the carry, the first in the football game for 5'7", 172-pound Garrett Wolf. Rob, we spent the week prepping for this football game as we do all our games, and I learned a lot about Garrett Wolf this week. An amazing young man. He's certainly considered a Heisman Trophy candidate right now, but Garrett Wolf, he doesn't say he doesn't want to win it, but more importantly to he and his football team, they want to win the MAC championship and win a bowl game. Those are certainly two things that say a lot about Garrett Wolf. And Garrett would be the first one to tell you he'd give up every single one of those individual acc accolades for a MAC championship. Wide open over the middle, caught over the 30 yard line, catch is made and a good one by Britt Davis and a first down for the Huskies. And that's something Northern Illinois wants to try to get more consistent at not depending on Garrett Wolf all the time. So a first and 10, let's take a look at the Ball State defense. Their starters brought to you by your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. Laramore, Wise, Karoma, and Booker, good defensive front four there. Jason Simmons, Wendell Brown, and Bryant Haynes, who's been playing outstanding this season. Trey Lewis, Eric Keyes, the leader in that secondary, McClure, and Euless Taylor. However, Trey Bice got the call to actually start this football game. We will see Euless Taylor, Garrett Wolf again, wrapped up and taken down right at the line of scrimmage by 44, Cortland Booker. And it's going to be individual plays like this by Booker, who just comes in, gets a nice hit, and wraps up on Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf, he's very shifty. He's got those big, giant offensive line uh, linemen in front of him. He'll get behind you, find the seam, and then turn on the burner. So it's going to take a uh, lot of plays by the front seven of the Cardinals to be able to catch this guy at the line of scrimmage all day long. Second down and 12 from the 30. Three wide for Horvath. He'll turn and hand to Garrett Wolf. He's got room off that right side. He is explosive. There's Garrett that Wolf, there is a penalty flag on the field. Wolf trying to outrun McClure. He is inside the 10, and Garrett Wolf has taken it in for a touchdown. We'll have to check the penalty flag that was all the way back near the 45-yard yeah. line. I think this one's coming back, Ben. I think what we're going to find out is number 14 wide receiver Jarrett Carter for the Huskies. I think we're going to get a holding call on Carter, and this one's coming all the way back. William Algie, our referee tonight, and the officiating crew, Tim Owens, the umpire, Greg Nowak, the head linesman, Anthony Canella, the line judge, Dennis Jackson, the field judge, Mike Conlon, the side judge, and Matt Edwards, the back judge. But you could really see on that play, though, that extra gear we're talking about from Garrett Wolf. Once he got through that line, he was gone, almost untouched the rest of the way. Repeat, second down. Joe Novak there, certainly. Never want to take points off the board. Not pleased, and here is another look, Rob. 
You were going to find the hold right up in here. There is the hold as Garrett Wolf cuts to the outside. That extra grab on the jersey right there was the difference. But seriously, look at this speed. I mean, Eric Keyes has a beeline on Garrett Wolf, and he barely gets such. I mean, Keyes can't even catch him. Number seven chasing him from behind. Horvath to the air. He's got Perez, and he makes the catch out near the 45-yard line. Marcus Perez. Wide out, returns you know, their punts and kicks as well. Horvath is so overlooked in this offense because it's all Garrett Wolf, Garrett Wolf, Garrett Wolf. Horvath was the only quarterback in Division I last year. He completed 70% of his passes. He had a rough start to the season, but he has really started building them, and he's back over 60% right now. This is a kid that is not going to make mistakes. Horvath. Over the middle, dumps it off. The big tight end, Jake Nordeen. Wendell Brown, the first Ball State player to They're get to him. bouncing off of him. But it took, in the end, about five, maybe six defenders to get Nordeen down, who entered the contest with 13 catches, the senior from Lake Lillian, Minnesota. I think a couple of the managers had to come off the bench to get Nordeen down on this one. Look at him go. Boy, he is, he is just built. Look at the size of that guy, Ben. Joe Novak said, you know what? He's got great hands, he's a great blocker, and to put it simply, he's a man on the football field, and he just showed you an example of that. They run to Garrett Wolf. he's got room up the middle. Wolf in the open field, 30, 25, 20. Garrett Wolf to the end zone, touchdown Northern Illinois. No flags on that one. These six points are gonna count for the Huskies, and just the speed of Garrett Wolf. He made uh, Marcus McClure, the free safety, look like he was standing still. Beautiful job by the offensive line. Wolf is coming right towards you. Look at the size of that hole. That's fantastic. One quick move, you're gonna watch number 23 from the left side of your screen. He's running as fast as he can, and Garrett Wolf is easily pulling away from him. I mean, he, just, he looks so effortless when he's in the open field, Ben. Point after try, coming here from Chris Nendick, make it 107 consecutive point afters for Chris Nendick. Garrett Wolf with that touchdown run has tied Michael the Burner Turner for career touchdowns in Northern Illinois history, his 48th, it's 7-0 Huskies. All right, White Sox fans this year, Jack, have been amazing. Record sellouts, record attendance. Every night at 6.30, 10 at midnight, there's only one show devoted to the true Chicago sports fan. Sports Night on Comcast Sportsnet. If you love Chicago sports, then this is your nightly destination for all that's happening. No other show goes as in-depth on your teams with highlights, interviews, analysis, and more time on the stories you care about. Chicago, this is your nightly sports news. Sports Night, every night at 6.30, 10 at midnight, only on Comcast Sportsnet. The new Chicago AT&T Yellow Pages. More about the city. More complete. More useful. More things to do. More places to go. More maps. More savings. More web. More than a name change. Introducing the Chicago AT&T Yellow Pages in the new Chicago Plus, published by R.H. Donnelly. People in Chicago looked to us more than 33 million times last year. Get ready for more. left here in this first quarter of play. Garrett Wolf has struck for a touchdown, made it 7-0 Northern Illinois, a 51-yard scamper, Rob. This offensive line is absolutely amazing. It's the pull right here. Watch these guys come over and seal the lane for Garrett Wolf. 
absolutely untouched. And again, just watching number 23, McClure, not barely even get into your picture. McClure's a burner. McClure's a guy that runs, you know, the, the 40 in well under five seconds, and he is just standing still when Garrett Wolf bursts past him. Well, add that long touchdown run to the ever-growing list of Garrett Wolf. He had a 51-yarder against Ohio State on the ground, also caught one for 65 against Ohio in week two, a 46-yard touchdown run, a 68-yarder against wow. Buffalo, a 49-yarder against Indiana State last week, and now 51 on the first touchdown. So 51, that's nothing. It's no, it's no big deal. Walk in the park for Garrett Wolf. Hendricks got it teed up. Ball State will get it for the second time. Dante Love backpedaling three yards deep in the end zone. <laughs> Alex Nip said, you know what? You better stay in there this time, Dante. We'll take it at the 20. Oh, Nip is reminding him last time he brought it out, he got to the 20 and got hit. This time he could just take a knee and get to the 20. Well, let's take a look at the Defensive starters for the Northern Illinois Huskies brought to you by your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. Visit thinkfordfirst.com for locations near you. Ken West coming off a great game last week. Benson, the nose guard, Alex Crutch, and Larry English, a good pass rushing defensive end. Blaylark, Tim McCarthy, we mentioned him on the first series back in the lineup. Corey Hansen, a redshirt freshman, they are very high on. Rice, Pruitt, Utschick. The safety back there and Hansbro rounding out that secondary for Joe Novak and the Northern Illinois Huskies. They find Larry Bostic here and Larry Bostic unable to get back to the line of scrimmage, wrapped up and taken down by Bradley Pruitt, the sophomore cornerback. Nice job out there by the NIU defense. I mean, they are not fooled by this quick swing pass at all. Totally collapsing on Larry Bostic and uh, no gain at all for the Cardinals on that play. Bostic out of the game and Nate Davis has yet to throw an interception, Rob. This is his fifth game. Got the nod here tonight from Brady Hoke. You know, neither one of these teams gives up the ball. They've only combined for, uh, what is it, five turnovers the entire season, these two teams? And Ball State trying to establish a running game. McQuail Lewis out to the 29-yard line. Rob, you look at Garrett Wolf, 5'7", Lewis, 5'6". There is not a running back in this game over 5'7". Amazing. No, and uh, you know, the coaching staff is really high. It's freshman Quail coming in here and trying to make an impact. They are hoping that one of their running backs will step up. Just from talking to some of the coaches this week, they make it sound like McQuail Lewis is the guy that they believe can take the next step and be the featured back in this offense. He is a product of Fort Wayne Snyder High School, the same high school that produced, well, I don't know, a Hall of Famer by the name of Rod Woodson. I'm not familiar with his work. They run the delay. <laughs> Lewis, some room between the guard and the tackle. First down, there is a flag on the play that came in from behind the play. And we'll check that. Of course, all the Cardinals saying that it's on the Huskies, but the guys in the stripes saying it's on the Cardinals, and they get the last say. Holding the call on Ball State. The last thing you need, listen, these are a couple of teams that each of them have been scoring over 28 points a game. Last thing you want to do is get down by a couple of scores. If it's going to be a barn burner, if it's going to come down to... Number 78, penalized 10 yards from the previous spot, repeat third down. If it's going to come down to the fourth quarter and who's moving the ball better, Brady Hoke knows that he wants his guys to have the ball in their hands, ready to play. And even it's going to be the uh, freshman, Nate Davis. But the last thing you want to do is start giving yards away in a, uh, in a shootout because, trust me, these are the two teams that can take advantage of the other team's mistakes. Nate Davis is calling these guys down. Get a couple of first downs so that the rest of the offensive line, the receivers, the running backs have faith in the true freshman quarterback. Third down and 11 for Ball State. They punted once on their first series. Davis, pocket collapses. He runs away from it, now fires. It is caught by Dante Love, and Dante Love taken out of bounds at the 36-yard line. First and 10, Cardinals. And that's where Nate Davis is going to be dangerous. Joey Lynch was good throwing the ball on the move, but Nate Davis watches him. The pocket collapses on this side, so Davis comes out this way. On the move, a perfect strike to, strike to Dante Love. The first first down of the game for the Ball State Cardinals. Dante Love adding to his already impressive 2006 season. Two receiving touchdowns. He's ran for a touchdown 
He did that against Eastern Michigan. Davis has time, he'll fire, and he's got Moss. Caught at the 40, and he's taken down at the 35-yard line, and the tackle made back there in the secondary by Pruitt. He's been busy here as he gets Terry Moss there. First down, Ball State. Adriel Hansbro, number 12, one of the twins on this uh, Husky team. He actually falls down right there. You saw it on the right side of your screen. He falls down while he's back in coverage, leaves the man wide open in the backfield. So uh, Hansbro trying to make a play on that one, but Moss gets over there, takes advantage of it. A huge play for BSU. Nice job by Nate Davis to see that one of the defenders had fallen down. 29 yard gain. Davis once again from the gun. He'll hand off to Lewis, tries to run off the right side, and he does not get much, about a yard, maybe two yards on that carry for McQuail Lewis, who entered the game with 102 yards, the team leader in rush yards. And that's something Ball State really, you looked at this team, Rob, at least I did before the season started. And with all the weapons they had coming back, if they can get a running game together, as you mentioned, the passing offense already sixth in the nation. This team could be very dangerous down the stretch in the MAC West. Last thing you want to do is be going into week five and say that your leading rusher has 102 yards. Garrett Wolf has 800 yards coming into the game today. Yes, Davis will swing it. Bostick's got it. Larry Bostick down near the 20 yard line. And another first down is Bostick, who entered this football game tied for sixth in the Mid American Conference with nearly five catches a game. Makes another one there, first down Cardinals. When you're the defensive end, you've got to be able to see everybody pulling out this way and not over pursue up the middle. It's exactly what's happened. Watch number 51 go all the way up. Because of that over pursuit, it's exactly what the Cardinals were thinking of when they called that play. Because the defensive end of Northern Illinois loved to get upfield, and they absolutely took advantage of it for that huge first down. Lewis, the carry there, he picked up three. Back to Bostic, if we can, Rob. Now, his career high back in 2003 for Larry Bostic, eight catches, 106 yards, and guess who it happened against? Um, the Northern Illinois Huskies? Yes, he has had a very good career. There's a look at I Lewis. should be on Jeopardy. There's Lewis in the huddle. <laughs> Bostic out now. He's been catching the football well, a ton. What is the Northern Illinois yeah, Huskies? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Against Purdue, Bostic had 10 catches for 99 yards. He's not in the game. Double tight end sent the fake from Davis. He's looking for Darius Hill in the end zone. Touchdown! Ball State, Darius Hill strikes again. A point after away from having a tie football game, and Darius Hill has burst onto the scene in 2006 for Ball State. It is a barn burner out there. It's the great play action on this play. Watch the play action that shifts everybody to the right. You get the defensive end coming in from the left side right there, number 97. Totally bites on that fake. It gives Nate Davis as much time as he wants to be able to get down and throw that pass. Beautiful completion, and we're one point away from a tie ball game. Darius Hill with his fifth touchdown of the season. Joey Lynch in the hole, good snap and good hold. And Brian Jackson adds the PAT. Darius Hill, who is a touchdown machine. More on that when we come back to Muncie. We're tied up at seven apiece. In the midst of a horrible heat wave, the quiet farming town of Perkinson was rocked by a burst of bright light and a series of thunderous booms. This is not just a crop circle. This is a sign. It's a request of some kind. Sir, you got to see this. What the man? When the situation calls for cold refreshment, call for Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Taste the cold. Want more than just the score? Then log on to ComcastSportsNet.com. Read analysis from Comcast Sportsnet's experts that you can't find anywhere else. Get up to the second news headlines. See the day's programming lineup. Check out talent bios and watch video clips featuring the latest info on your teams. Plus, sign up for Sports Extra and Sports Blast email alerts that make you the first to know about breaking news. So what are you waiting for? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com right now. BMW 5 Series, now with optional night vision. 
Lease a BMW 525i for $4.99 a month, now until September 30th. 5.51 to go in the first quarter, 7-7. Darius Hill, Rob, now with 28 career receptions wow. and eight touchdowns. He entered the season with 11 total catches, and this year, 17 for 360 and five scores. And this is just such a nice job of Hill getting back behind the defense. I mean, you, you look at a guy who's been, been scoring touchdowns left and right, right over 300 yards receiving on the season. How a guy that big and that tall gets completely lost in your secondary is beyond me. These are a couple secondaries that have allowed teams to score on them. They've got to buckle down. One of these guys, one of these DBs from one of these two teams has got to make a big play today. Both coaches talk about the fact that they're, you know, their they're secondaries aren't making plays. They're not getting interceptions. They're not knocking the ball out. They're not forcing other teams to beat them. They're letting other teams beat them. So these are a couple of secondaries that have a lot to prove as they really get into the meat of the max season. Both teams exceptional when it comes to turning over the football. Or lack there. Exactly. Davis, a yard deep in his end zone, looking for oh. a seam, and Dante Love who does a little bit of everything, Rob. Kick returns, punt returns, wide receiver, runs the ball, and now he can add to his repertoire, tackling on special teams. And that was pretty, that was fighting off a block. Watch Dante Love. He's actually, he's got a Husky all over him. Look at him fight through, puts his shoulder down. Give me that leg, that's my leg. Down you go, and the Husky's starting deep in their own territory because of that young man, Dante Love. He's walking with a purpose. Look at that guy go. He's been known to do that from time to time as Dante Love. First and 10 from the 11. Phil Horvath stumbles, gets his footing. He'll fire over the middle. Caught by Davis. He is stuck by his counterpart, number seven, Eric Keys, Rob, who's been outstanding in that secondary for Brady Hoke squad. Yeah, no doubt about it. Eric Keys, uh, number seven for the Cardinals, has done a nice job. Every game that we've seen him from, we have been impressed. And watch the good open field tackle. Phil Horvath almost ending up on his backside there. But watch, beautiful open field tackle. You know what? It doesn't get any better than that. Shoulder pad right in the gut. Wrap up around. It doesn't let the guy go anywhere. The worst case scenario, even if he's a little stronger than you are, you hold him up for one of the other guys to come and get them. But Eric Keys, trust me, plenty strong. That's a beautiful tackle. Man of the game, 10th in the Mid-American Conference. Just over eight tackles a game. And Horvath has to take a timeout here. And it is the first used timeout by Northern Illinois. So each team with two timeouts remaining with 5.02 left here in this first quarter in a 7-7 game. Tune in next Saturday, October the 7th, for more live college football right here on Comcast Local. At noon, it's Western Michigan taking on Frank Solich and the Ohio Bobcats. And at 7, Mercy Hurt, they go to Grand Valley State to take on the Lakers live college football action at noon and 7 next Saturday right here on Comcast Local. I picked Ohio U to, uh, to win the, their MAC East this year, and they had a stumble against Bowling Green today after they had already come out and shocked the NIU Huskies at home. And that was a game that the Huskies uh, early in the season thought they could start the MAC season 1-0, but that was a tough loss to Ohio. Now they get a little help. Ohio turns around. They lose to, uh, to Bowling Green. Now NIU knows that, yeah, that one loss might not hurt them. If they can uh, finish out the rest of the season, they're going to be in fine shape. But we got to make sure not to drop one here in Schumann Stadium against the Cardinals. Eric Keyes and the Ball State defense set. Phil Horvath, coming out of high school, was recruited by several Big Ten schools. Horvath lined up as a wide receiver. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Britt Davis, who is a high school quarterback, a dual threat guy from the shotgun snap. He'll keep it, tries to get some blocks. It does not fool Ball State. And Joe Novak, and listening to him this week, Rob, he said, look, we may never give the ball to Britt Davis from the shotgun or from the quarterback position again. They did it a little bit last week, or we may see him do it 70 or 80 times. Well, here's one so far tonight. Entirely possible. This one is a great play by number 44, Cortland Booker. You see, he didn't get in on the tackle, but Booker's the first one to bust through the line and have a shot at Britt, and then they'll let the rest of the guys roll on through, including Brian Haynes, to make that tackle. Horvath gives off to Garrett Wolf into the secondary, and Wolf is out near the first down stick, and he should have it. He makes it look so easy, does Garrett Wolf. 
And they should move the chains. Indeed, they will. He picks up a first down on a fine piece of running and great blocking again. Well, that's that's exactly it right there. You, you stole the thunder from me. It's that offensive line that allows Garrett Wolf to make it look so easy. I mean, when you got guys out there like Doug 3, 6 7, 3, 15, Chris Acevedo, 6 5, 3, 0, 4. Uh, you got the true freshman, uh, Anya Bago. I knew I was going to mispronounce his name, but he's out there at 3 0, 5. You got Rogers starting. All these guys, I mean, they are averaging over 300 pounds on the offensive line. Horvath, he finds Garrett Wolf with a pass. Wolf can do a little bit of that from time to time as well. I'll tell you what Mother Nature can do from time to time. She just blow through. I don't know if you can see this going on. All of a sudden, there's a, like a typhoon blowing through Schumann Stadium right now. It's happened from wow. time to time here, and it's happening again, Rob, every time we have been to this stadium and the fans are look, look at all that stuff indeed. blowing around the stands right now. Clearing out a stadium. I think we just lost our weather plate. I think we did. 352 to go here in this first quarter. Handoff. Guess who? Garrett Wolf finds a seam. Fumble the football. It came loose. It's still there. And we will have to unpile here. There was a ball state player right near the football as it was knocked away from Garrett Wolf. The Cardinals saying they have the football. The officials coming in, they're still trying to sort it out. Ball State indicating they have it. And William Algy, more importantly, the referee indicates Ball State has it. Well, this is a huge break for Ball State. We talked about it on the last one. Watch here, right near the end. What a fantastic play by Brian Haynes, number 49. The uh, sophomore linebacker gets his hand on that ball from Garrett Wolf knocks it out and you trust me you do not want to know what's going on at the bottom of that pile because there's a lot of poking and prodding and grabbing things that normally you wouldn't grab watch number 49 right at the end of the play boom right there he knocks the ball away from garrett wolf turns into a first down and a very short field for the cardinals three and a half to go here in this first quarter davis darius hill dodges a tackle and is taken down hill will pick up three and a half on the pass on first down and 10 here as Hill had that 19-yard touchdown catch on the last drive for Ball State. And Darius Hill making his way to the sideline. Right now the uh, the rain is coming down pretty hard here on the field. It looks like uh, we may have had a lightning strike. Is that possibly what's going on? Well, if that's the case, then it will be We are being told, you may have heard, the game is suspended. Rob, now with a lightning strike, it's certainly 30 minutes after that strike was recorded. This looks like recorded. more than a lightning yes, strike to me. They've it does. People, they're actually clearing the stands and the press box here. Game has been suspended, we have been told, and it just came out of nowhere. Well, there's the, there's the sky. The West. Yeah, off to the uh, to the north. I literally see blue skies and nice billowing clouds. And then you shift off to the north, and that is actually right above the press box right here. That is about as ominous as you can see. Well, it's off to the northwest from our vantage point. Wow. And the stadium is being cleared. And we will be back. We are going to send you to some other programming right now on Comcast Local. We'll check back in with you in about 15 minutes down the road. This game right now has been suspended between Northern Illinois and Ball State with 3.17 to go in the first quarter of play. The fun begins where the road ends. Introducing the Toyota FJ Cruiser, starting at under 22,000. Toyota, a great way to keep moving forward. Honest. Que yo siempre he dicho las cosas como tienen que ser y, y el que le gustó le gustó, el que no le gustó, problema para mí. Family man. Lo único que yo tengo en, mi, en esta vida, lo único que yo tengo en mi vida son mis tres hijos. Eso es lo único que yo tengo. Champion. Ozzy Guillen on Mi Manera, The Encore. A one-night marathon of all five Spanish episodes on Ozzy Guillen's life and career. 
presented by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers and United Auto Insurance Group. Monday night at 7, only on Comcast. First, there was a black hole. Then, there was a big bang. Now, there's a bigger bang. Radio Shack presents The Rolling Stones. On October 11th at Soldier Field, special guest Elvis Costello. Tickets at Ticketmaster on Let's Ticketmaster.com or call 312-559-1212. Don't miss The Rolling Stones, a bigger bang. You only have 96 hours. The Dodge 96-hour clearance event. From right now until October 2nd, get our best offer of the year. 0% financing for 72 months and make no monthly payments until March 2007. Only 96 hours to get the best deals on Dodge Durango with the best interior room in its class. And only 96 hours to get Dodge Grand Caravan featuring exclusive stow-and-go seating and storage. The Dodge 96-hour event. Remember, it's only 96 hours. This offer ends October 2nd. Back here in Muncie, Indiana, Ben Holden, Rob Otto. Mother Nature has, well, she's moved out of Muncie, Indiana <laughs> for the night, and we are set, Rob, to resume this football game after close to an hour delay. 3.17 on the game clock. Second down and seven. The ball's at the 37-yard line. Two touchdowns, Rob. Take us through the highlights here as we take a look back at what transpired in the first quarter. You know, looking now and looking back then, this looks like two different days. It's like it was a day game turned into a night game. The defensive line of the Huskies having their way with the true freshman Nate Davis who started but the uh, Cardinal defensive line early getting to uh, Garrett Wolf but it's all Garrett Wolf on this one fantastic job by the offensive line to bust him out and just look at him accelerate all the way through the end zone that was a 7 nothing lead with 9.33 to go but answering back beautiful play action fake right there by the young freshman Davis he gets the ball up and over to wide open Darius Hill that was with 5.51 to go and then the weather hit a beautiful look at it right there the blue skies turned into the skies that you see now above Schumann Stadium so with 3.17 to go in the first quarter this one is all tied at 7.7 seven. the wind is still blowing there is a bit of rain still left out there but um you know, now, now that the weather has kind of moved on, things are really getting back to normal. We were looking at some weather on uh, somebody's cell phone. We saw the big front has moved through. So now it is very dark. We are under the lights. Yes, this is the same game from those highlights of the sunny sky. But I guess that's, uh, you know, if you don't like the weather here in Muncie, you wait an hour and it changes. Yeah, or less. <laughs> Underway, Nate Davis got the start, the true freshman. He'll fire and downfield. He was looking for Terry Moss, who slipped down there back near the 15-yard line, third and seven upcoming. Wasn't the one thing. The field was very dry. It was really fast before we got started, but we had downpours of rain while we were away. And now it's going to get pretty sloshy and muddy and wet out there. It's going to slow everybody down. Plus, you know, a 10-minute warm-up may sound good, but these guys are used to warming up for 45 minutes before game time. So just sitting there in the locker room and then having to come Come out this could be a slow couple of minutes uh, for the Cardinals and the Huskies one for two are the Cardinals on third down so far this is their third opportunity to the air it is caught by Lewis Johnson and he extends and a determined Lewis Johnson gets the first down for Ball State and you can think the uh, great block in the backfield catching up the uh, outside linebacker Larry Bostic number 19 watch him on the left side of your screen the linebacker is making a straight play for Nate Davis and then a beautiful job at the end of that one Lewis Johnson stretching uh, for the first down but if not for that quick block on number 51 Larry English by Larry Bostic that could have easily been a sack instead it's a fresh set of downs for Ball State. Lewis Johnson caught his first career touchdown a four yard pass a year ago against Northern Illinois so he knows how to step up against this Husky squad Larry Bostic got the handoff not much there he'll pick up a couple and Larry in fact Bostic Rob Northern here. Illinois there is a penalty flag there Northern Illinois last year was absolutely stunned by this Ball yeah. State team late in the season, and they were not real happy in listening to the Ball State or the uh, Northern Illinois players comment on Ball State earlier in the week. There's the indication on the penalty. They this is a revenge game for them without question. Yeah, and you know as much as the coaches, you know uh, Brady Hoke and and. Um, um, Joe Novak, geez, thank you very Defense, much. Defense number 53 penalized five yards from the end of the run. 
remain second down. As much as the coaches always like to say, listen, we, 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 we put the history behind us. We sit there, we want to look at this game. Brady Hoke knows that his guys remember what they did to Northern Illinois, snapping a, a, a six game losing streak. And because of that last year, they had to come back. Wow, there is. First down, it remains first down. It's odd, there's actually lightning flashes off to the south East, and south, south and south east. east of us. Thank you very much. But yep, that is past it's moved us. Up. It's got to, it, the lightning has to be within X number of miles for them to even think about calling this game. So we were watching the weather there, but we are now moving forward from the weather, hopefully. Lewis on the carry, and he is close to the first down, but he will be a yard short on what was first down and five on the incidental face mask penalty against Northern Illinois. And McQuail Lewis so far in the football game, four carries and 14 yards on the ground for him. And it's what Brady Hoke has been looking for from his offense. He wants one guy. He wants a running back to step up. This young man, uh, Quayle Lewis, looks like the guy that they are thinking they can pin their hopes of the future on in terms of finding that number one running back. Lewis on second down. He's got the first down inside the 20, and he's taken down over there in the secondary. Coming up to make the play is their senior free safety and a good one, Dustin Utchick, number 35. What a nice job by the offensive line. The defense is trying to stretch them out. One quick move by Quayle right there to get to the outside, just barely missing that great tackle uh, by Brad Benson. Number 49 gets a hand on him, but quick feet, quick arms. Quayle gets to the first down mark, and he's pretty happy about it. And one of the things they like about him, well, there are several, but the vision, he's got the great balance, he's got the great burst, and that is something that Brady Hoke and Stan Parrish, the offensive coordinator for Ball State Field, will certainly make him a good one here before he is done. He gets the carry again, left side. He's able to pick up a couple, but that Northern Illinois right side of that line. Their linebackers get over there. There is 53 over there in on that tackle. In fact, that's Tim McCarthy who didn't play last week, got the start here tonight. They got him back and they're thrilled about it to say the least are the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Inside of a minute and a half left here in this first quarter of play. It is second down and eight upcoming and the ball is at the 16 yard line so far in the football game. Nate Davis eight for nine for 90 yards with a touchdown. For Ball State, there is the true freshman. Got good protection. He'll fire into the end zone. Darius Hill trying to make the catch in there. They double team Darius Hill, and he goes 6'6", six, six, and he's got a great set of springs in those legs. He can get up and get it, but he couldn't get that one. Nice job by number eight for the Huskies. Mark Ryder coming across on this one. Watch him late in the play. Number eight coming from the right-hand side of your screen. Getting up, getting a hand on uh, Hill. Not enough for the flag. Well, that cameraman got a good shot down there, didn't he? Second, third down conversion that Ball State has needed on this drive. The Cardinals are two for three in that department so far. Inside of a minute to go in the opening quarter to play. Second MAC game of the year for Ball State to the air. Darius Hill, he's got it down near the goal line. He doesn't get in the end zone, but it is a first and goal upcoming for Ball State after Davis found the big target, Hill. What a nice job by the true freshman, Nate Davis, moving up in the pocket. He's in there because he's got better mobility. You almost expect him to run here. Instead, he steps up in the pocket. Instead of just tucking the ball, he keeps his eyes downfield. And boy, was that close to the goal line. But watch Nate Davis here. Instead of just tucking the ball and running, He's able to put it up, and they run a quick play, quick push towards the goal line, but the uh, the line judge saying that they are just short, so it'll be second and goal from inside the one-yard line. Well, Davis, Rob, made an instant impact on everybody surrounding the Ball State program in his very first game. Brady Hoke put him in against Eastern Michigan, and all he did was, remember, go six for six in that game before throwing an incompletion. He finished with three touchdowns in that football game, came into the game with five, now at a half dozen after the earlier touchdown in this first quarter that, well, it was about an hour ago, roughly, yeah, that's quite a drive. It's lasted 65 minutes. <laughs> yes. Well, Rob, after nearly, well, an hour and a half, the first quarter has finally come to an end. The weather has moved on. Come on back for the start of the second quarter between Northern Illinois and Ball State.
For nearly 15 years, HVAC Tech has been providing students with hands-on training that will give you the real-world experience needed in the field. Job opportunities are soaring in the heating and air conditioning field. Day and evening classes are available in our state-of-the-art 10,000 square foot laboratory. Smaller class sizes give you the one training guarantee to make you valuable in the job market. With 80% job placement enrollment today, we'll have your career in full speed before this holiday season. Located right by Midway Airport, call HVAC Tech today at 1-800-769-HVAC and get your career moving today. If you're afraid you'll lose your home or pension if you file bankruptcy, you're wrong. New laws mean you can file bankruptcy and protect more home equity and pension than ever before. New bankruptcy laws even let you repay 401k loans ahead of other debts. I'm attorney Peter Francis Geraci. Don't let fear keep you from getting out of debt. If you're behind in your mortgage, car, or credit cards, log on to infotapes.com or call now. 1-888-332-1107. Start of the second quarter, Ben Holden, Rob Otto, and all of our crew, and our crew certainly earning its money tonight. Oh, yeah. The winds came through. We had close to an hour delay. The game was suspended, but right now, Northern Illinois, Ken West, 34 in there, and Craig Rush, the two defensive linemen talking things over, and Ball State, Rob, has a second down and goal coming up at the one. They'll need Ramsey and the big boys up front to give them some push and some protection. And, you know, this is coming actually off the Northern Illinois turnover. This drive is, so you got to see if... Uh, Davis can marshal the troops and uh, make sure that they take advantage. It's only one of four turnovers that the Huskies have had all season long. This is not a team that traditionally gives the ball away. Second down and goal. They toss it, and Bostic's able to break free, but coming up to make that play back at the five-yard line, the fine middle linebacker on Bostic, that is Tim McCarthy with a great play. It was a great job. Watch the entire line get a push out here, and nobody is full. Ustich doing a nice job of getting in there, making first contact on the outside, and now everybody else gets to run in there. So number 35 making first contact, just enough to slow down Larry Bostic, and then coming up to uh, clean things up. Tim McCarthy, and boy, is he having a field day on his first game back from injury. Well, ironically enough, Rob, I've just been told the with McCarthy making that tackle, 53. Our weather delay was exactly 53 minutes. So it's McCarthy's fault. Yeah, Davis throws, tipped and knocked away and caught! Caught wow. by Steinhaus! Deflection came right to Michael Steinhaus, who in his career, like the other tight end, Darius Hill, when you look at the total number of catches he has, the touchdowns, the ratio is impressive. Cardinals are up 13-7. You figure this is exactly how Brady Hope uh, drew this one up. Have your freshman quarterback bounce the ball off one receiver, and then have your big tight end camping in the back. Touchdown. Just, I mean, that is uh, right on the stick exactly the way that Brady Hope envisioned that one, Ben. Jack's on to try and make get a 14-7 game, and he does. I think so. the uh, viewers uh, heard the sarcasm there. Yes. <laughs> Michael Steinhaus, oddly enough, Rob, had not caught a pass since opening night. He had one catch for eight yards. Tonight, he's got a touchdown catch. I love the way you've decorated in here. Want to get away? Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines nonstop from Chicago Midway to Washington Dulles International for just $59 one way. Purchased by November 20th. You are now free to move about the country. Hi, everybody. Hawk and DJ here. Comcast Sportsnet and the White Sox would like to thank you, the fans, for making this a record-breaking season here at U.S. Cellular Field. The 2006 season is now the highest attended season in the history of the White Sox franchise. Breaking the previous record of 2.934 million set back in 1991, which was then the first year of New Comiskey Park. Comcast Sportsnet, the White Sox players, coaches, and the entire organization thank all the great White Sox fans for making this season such a success. You only have 96 hours. The Dodge 96-hour clearance event. From right now until October 2nd, get our best offer of the year. 0% financing for 72 months and make no monthly payments until March 2007. Only 96 hours to get the best deals on Dodge Durango with the best interior room in its class. And only 96 hours to get Dodge Grand Caravan featuring exclusive stow-and-go seating and storage. 
the Dodge 96-hour clearance event. Remember, it's only 96 hours. This offer ends October 2nd. 14-12 to go here in the second quarter. Darius Hill, number 88, holding court there in the middle, Rob. He caught the first touchdown, and like Hill, Michael Steinhaus, an incredible ratio of catch to touchdown, now 25 career catches and eight touchdowns for Steinhaus. Well, you know, Dante Love has to go over and thank uh, Steinhaus. He's got to grab his hand because Dante Love basically dropped a gimme touchdown. The ball bounced off of Dante Love eventually into the hands of Steinhaus, but they know Brady Hope would not be smiling right now if he uh, would have seen the way that Dante Love, if that would have turned into an incomplete pass or even an interception. I mean, that was a really dangerous ball after it bounced off the shoulder pad. Dante Love's got to do a better job of getting his hands out, catching that ball with his hands rather than letting it bounce off of his uh, shoulder pads. Well, Nate Davis, the true freshman quarterback for Ball State. Brady Hoke certainly had a good feeling about him entering the football game. And Davis, so far, 10 for 12 for 110 yards and two touchdowns. As he got the nod tonight over the fifth-year senior, Joey Lynch. Britt Davis out to the 25-yard line. They wrap him up there, and that's where Phil Horvath and the Huskies of Northern Illinois will start after a 12-play, 40-yard drive that took four minutes and 28 seconds for Ball State. So Davis back into the huddle, 57 seconds gone here in the quarter. And Garrett Wolf, six rushes, 75 yards, and a touchdown so far. You can catch the Michigan State Spartans in action next Sunday with the men's soccer team. They take on the Michigan Wolverines. Dave Zorn and Roger Faulkner bring you the action at 2 o'clock Eastern right here on Comcast Local. Your ticket to Midwest Sports. And here's Horvath straight back to throw over the middle, and it's dropped. And Rob Davis couldn't make the catch. Joe Novak told us earlier this week, in fact, Joe Novak and John Bond, the offensive coordinator, said, guys, we had six passes dropped last week, three for touchdowns. That can't happen. No, that can happen, and it's exactly why these guys have got to help their quarterback out. I mean, Phil Horvath is only going to be throwing the ball. He's not going to throw it all that much. I mean, look at uh, just the passing yards for NIU. We're talking 46 passing yards the entire first quarter. They're going to run the ball most of the time, so when they do pass it, you can't have receivers dropping balls like that. Garrett Wolf on the carry there. Haynes came in to help out, but the first contact was made in there by 36, Jason Simmon. Last time we saw Haynes, he had a club on his left hand. He had a finger, his thumb, in fact, stuck in the helmet of a Eastern Michigan player. That's the tight end, Jake Nordine. Yeah, that would be a tough, tough loss. Jake Nordine is huge in this passing game, but he's also huge in the running game. He's a fantastic blocker from the tight end position. It's like having another tackle out there for Joe Novak, and you can see there's obvious concern about Nordine being down. Obviously, it doesn't matter who the player was. You know, the coaching staff would be concerned, but they've got to keep an eye on a guy like Nordine and get him back on the field if they can. Well, he's got a catch for four yards. We'll update you on his condition right after this. Attention fashionistas, the Style Network is coming to Chicago. So get ready to get gorgeous because Style and Comcast are bringing the Style Bus to Chi-Town. You could be next to board the Style Bus and get a model-worthy makeover and fashion advice from our experts. You take it and round it out, then I'm going to slowly twist it like this and then set that with heat. Fabulous bohemian hair. Log on to EverydayRunwayChicago.com to see when the Style Bus will be in your area and watch Style and Comcast Digital Cable Channel 183. How am I ever going to find the answer? The key to wisdom is knowing the right questions. What are the questions? How can I connect with the world around me? Which path is the best to choose? What is the coolest technology on the block? Comcast. You will go far. Add Comcast high-speed internet with PowerBoost for as low as $33 per month. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. 13.33 to go in the second quarter. Ball stayed up by seven. And, Rob, this does not look good no. for the outstanding tight end for Northern Illinois, Jake Nordine. Well, you never like to see it. Here is Nordine right here blocking. And watch the defender rolls up on Nordine's left leg. I mean, he's almost in pain here. It's going to be on the uh, right side of your screen. Right here is Nordine. And watch the, watch the defender roll up on that left leg of Nordine. I mean, he's almost falling back in pain right there already. And this is a bad, bad sign. Nordine was laying on the ground and he is still down. They worked out, they brought out the air cast 
They're filling it up on his left leg, and then they're going to be carting him off the field. Obvious concern on both sides, both sidelines right here. You never like to see this for one of these young men. All the work and effort that they put into this, and then to watch somebody cart it off the field, you never like to see that. Well, tune in for Michigan High School football action this Wednesday, October the 4th. The Comcast Local Varsity Showcase comes your way. Forest Hills Northern, they take on Lowell for a 2.30 Eastern time kick right here on Comcast Local. Now, Rob, the good news, if we can get a shot of Nordine, he was able to put a little weight and hop his way over to that yeah, cart. They didn't, they didn't have to carry him to the cart, so that's a pretty good sign. Yes. But uh, he was putting most of the weight on his opposite leg. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, they're going to get him in here, get him in the facility, take a look at it, try and get an MRI on it. A little heads up by Nordine there. But we uh, hope, uh, one, we hope you're not a lip reader, and two, um, we hope that there's uh, no serious difficulty for this uh, fine young football player. Well, Nordine taking off. That will mean Brandon Davis will come into the football game. Okay, that was a shot of the moon briefly, but as soon as we took to that shot, apparently the clouds rolled in. I started thinking that something went wrong, that God didn't want us to do this game. <laughs> well, it's been a strange night here, to say the least. So, yeah, we, it's kind of like a twilight zone night thus far. So who knows what may happen. This football game's got big score potential written all over it. Ball State leads it 14-7. Garrett Wolf. As the touchdown for Northern Illinois, Horvath's got all day to throw, looking, firing, caught at the 40-yard line. McClure made the stop, Marcus Perez with the catch. The reason that Horvath has all day is because the tight end that just came in for Nordine, Brandon Davis, throws a beautiful block. That's Brandon Davis out there. Look at him absolutely manhandling Cortland Booker. It allowed Horvath to move out of the pocket to his right. A beautiful block and a great completion. Well, Perez, a season ago, didn't even play. Broke his hand, had a concussion in spring ball, and never got an opportunity to show what he could do. This young man has, and that would be Garrett Wolf. Brian Haynes, 49, all over the back of Garrett Wolf, trying to strip that Garrett football. They got him once earlier, did the Ball State Cardinals, but Wolf holds on to the pig this time. And the clock continues to run with 12 and a half to go in a second quarter that Garrett Wolf would like to see that rushing number go up. Rob, he's averaging over 10 yards a pop in this game. Seven rushes for 76 in the 51 yard scamper. And, and I got to point out that he had a 70 yard touchdown run brought back because of holding in the first quarter of this game. I mean, this kid's amazing. He's run for over 170 yards in seven consecutive contests. Check that eight carries, 80 yards. This is number nine, and Garrett Wolf with a first down, a big chunk of yardage right there. 17 yards on the carry for Garrett Wolf. And he doesn't just do it against the little sisters of the poor. I mean, it's not like they put a bunch of cupcakes on their schedule. We're talking Ohio State, Northwestern. I mean, and, and against the University of Michigan last year, it was unbelievably good. Now, Rob, that was the game to me. A lot of people will argue that it was the Akron game, the Bowling Green game, but the game at Michigan to open the 2005 season when Garrett Wolf got Michigan for 148 yards on 17 carries and a 76 yard touchdown run. That was the game to me that really put this young man on the college football map. He's got it again, he's got room, he's yanked down, Booker got him, a yard shy of the first down. You know what though, Ben? Getting on the map is one thing. Anybody can have a big game out of the blue, out of nowhere. It's the way he's been able to stay on the map. I mean, this guy is routinely, Garrett Wolf, going over 200 rushing yards. It just happens. I mean, uh, every time you talk to uh, to uh, his head coach, Joe Novak, about it, he's like, listen, I hope we're at the point where we can take him out after the first half. I don't care about the yards. But this guy last week basically played the entire first half, one series of the second half, had 198 yards rushing. Gets it again, tries to find a seam, and that's what's so difficult about him is he gets another first down, 11 carries for Garrett Wolf, and he's closing in on 110 yards. Now, Rob, you and I were on the field before the game. Got to, you want to see a player like this. He's, he's a once-in-a-lifetime guy. 
for many people. However, Northern Illinois has got quite a history of tailbacks with Michael Burner turner and, of course, LaShawn Johnson and their running back coach, Thomas Hammock. But this guy is really, to me, a player you just don't see every day. Now, there's, there's something special about this uh, Garrett Wolf, and it's because of that fine running. Look how much room the wide receivers have. I mean, you get all the linebackers and safeties so worried about Garrett Wolf that you're almost always going to get single coverage to the outside. Just gives Horvath the opportunity. I mean, look how easy this is. I'm not going to say it's so easy that I could have completed that pass, but for Marcus Perez <laughs> catching from Horvath, that's about as easy as it can get. And uh, you know the coaches and the players love having Perez back with this team. Well, Perez touchdown catches against Ohio and then Buffalo. In fact, the one against Ohio was the first in his career. He had four catches for 87 yards that day. And today, over 10 a pop, three catches, 32 yards. Flag on the play. William Algy, our referee. Full start, offense. Number 50, penalized five yards, remains second down. Ball start on the center. There's Joe Novak in his 11th season as Northern's head coach. Mentioned earlier in the broadcast, if you weren't with us, Joe Novak from the co cradle of coaches at least played his college football down at Miami and played for Bo Schembechler. And Rob, we asked him, what would Bo say about you? Or what does he say about you? And he said, he'd say, I'm very bright, but really slow. <laughs> Horvath, nothing slow about that. The tight end in there for Nordine Davis puts his head down, and he is down just shy of the 15-yard line. Brandon Davis uh, getting the opportunity. I mean, he's had his time in this offense. You know, you switch Nordine out, and Davis is the one that comes in. But he keeps making plays like this. And uh, his head coach, Joe Novak, is going to try to use him more. Look at that fantastic catch. It's a bad throw by Horvath. I'm sure he'd tell you the same thing. But a fantastic job by Davis. Look at him reach back behind his body to grab this one. And then look for the block downfield. A little extra room and a uh, fresh set of downs for the Huskies. Well, that's older brother, Brandon maybe showing younger brother Britt how it's done. Brandon's 22, Britt is 20. And just the second catch of the season. Here goes Garrett Wolf. He's got a block inside the five, puts his head down, and he's taken down at the two yard line. First just and goal. See the tough yards there, Ben? I mean, you look at this guy and he's, you know, physically he's not much, but don't think that he's just out there avoiding hits. Watch Garrett Wolf at the end of this run. He realizes he's got nowhere to go. What does he do? Put your shoulder down. He's not avoiding contact. I mean, you know, say about guys like, like Barry Sanders, they never really took a solid hit. This guy does not try to make you miss. I mean, he does, but he's not afraid to put his shoulder down, even though the guy's four inches taller and 30 pounds heavier than he is. Wolf gets it again, yanked down in the backfield. A fine play made in there. Very nice play turned in on the defensive front for Ball State by Amara Karoma. Great job by Karoma just to push straight up here. Absolutely sticking with his gap, not being fooled by any uh, misdirection, and he just pushes straight forward. Great tackle by Karoma, pushes the uh, Huskies back, and now it is second and goal from about the six yard line. Brady Hoke said of Karoma earlier this week, he's a bit of a slow starter, and his play has certainly picked up in the last couple of weeks. Horvath will try to throw, he does, it's caught and dropped in the end zone. And they are going to say that's an incomplete pass. And Rob, I certainly would agree with him. He did not have enough possession of that ball as it came out. I think the uh, replay will show us that as well. It was a uh, nice opportunity. Actually really well defended. It's, this is one of those plays when you've got the quick slant and you're in a, three, a quick three-step drop, just boom, 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 and go. There's almost no way to defend that. But the defender is right there making contact. And yeah, that ball is squirting around so much. Uh, that, uh, that, that is absolutely an incomplete pass, though. I'm sure there's some Cardinal fans out there that are thinking that should have gone for six the other way. So third down from the seven, third and goal. 8.14 to go until halftime. Horvath will look to throw again. Pressured, he fires. It's caught inside the five by Davis, Britt Davis. Weiss took him down. There is a penalty flag on the play, Rob. This one came out there right in the area. It's more than likely going to be holding by the Huskies. We'll have to see how uh, how this one comes out and exactly what decision Brady Hoke is going to make. Well, do you decline it or give him another chance? See, I, I don't think there's any reason to take this yardage. I think you make it be fourth down, you make them go for the field goal attempt. Why give them another opportunity to try and get the ball into the end zone? 
That's Brad Cease, number 42 there, one of two captains for this Ball State team. What a story Cease is. Four and a half months ago, had the ACL and the Holy MCL go. Offense, number 60, penalized 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat, third down. You know, I, I don't, I don't like that decision at all, Ben. I, I really don't. I mean, why give the Huskies the other, the uh, opportunity? Joe Novak and his guys now have one more shot at the end zone. Instead, they had it inside the 10-yard line. Sure, it would have been a chip shot field goal, but you're not out of field goal range here. And all you're doing, if you're Brady Hope, is giving the Huskies one more chance to get that ball in the end zone, and they're lining up trips to the left. Looks like they're going to try to dish this one in. And Garrett Wolf is out there as a receiver. Horvath looking that way. He's got time. Fires into the corner. It is caught. Did Torres get in? He is given the touchdown, at least for now. This may be a review, but it's given Northern Illinois a chance to tie this game up. Now, this is exactly why I do not like that decision to take the penalty by Brady Hope. They would have had a fourth down. Instead, you see this. Now, keep an eye. He's pushed out. I still think he actually got, I think Perez got his left foot in despite being pushed. Watch right here near the end of this play. And look at all the time that Horvath has. Delivers a great pass where only he can get it despite the push. Yes, you do get your left foot down right there. Nice job. Great camera work, guys. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. That is the perfect shot. Perez gets there. The uh, extra point was good, and so now it is 14 all. So the touchdown pass from Horvath to Perez. It's tied us up at 14 all here in Muncie. December 17th, Range Rover Sport experience rush hour 200 feet beneath Tokyo. See how at LandRoverUSA.com. Designed for the extraordinary, the Range Rover Sport by Land Rover. Honest. Yo siempre he dicho las cosas como tienen que ser y el que le gustó le gustó, el que no le gustó, problema para mí. Family man. Lo único que yo tengo en mi en esta vida, lo único que tengo en mi vida son mis tres hijos. Son lo único que yo tengo. Champion. Ozzy Guillen on Mi Manera, The Encore. A one-night marathon of all five Spanish episodes on Ozzy Guillen's life and career. Presented by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers and United Auto Insurance Group. Monday night at 7, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Some wireless companies go to great lengths to tell you their network is good. They say it works here. And here. Or here. Or here. But with U.S. Cellular, you can test the network yourself to make sure it works where you use it the most. Even if it is just here. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Put our new national plans to the test for 30 days. Every night at 6.30, 10 at midnight, there's only one show devoted to the true Chicago sports fan. Sports Night on Comcast Sportsnet. If you love Chicago sports, then this is your nightly destination for all that's happening. No other show goes as in-depth on your teams with highlights, interviews, analysis, and more time on the stories you care about. Chicago, this is your nightly sports news. Sports Night, every night at 6.30, 10 at midnight, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Hello, Neil Armstrong. <laughs> See, what you're seeing here is planting the flag right here and then a quick out and around to the Apollo module and right back to Earth. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> of course, not too far away from here at Purdue <laughs> University, one of, the, one of the top universities in terms of astronomical engineering. But here's Perez engineering a touchdown there, getting the foot in. And that is such a well-run play. You get Perez doing the down and out You've got another wide receiver coming back in. It brought the safety, Eric Keyes, off the ball, left single coverage on Perez in the end zone, and that turned into a beautiful pass, beautiful catch, taking advantage of what I think was a, a, a bad decision, a miscommunication or just a, uh, I don't know, not realizing that you'd be forcing them to go for the field goal or something. I, I think Brady Hope would like to have that one back. Chris Nendick. Sends it into play. Dante Love right at the goal line. Slips. Dante's trying to find a seam. 
And he's taken down at the 18-yard line. That's where Ball State will start. Of course, Dante Love's been known to make a play or two of his own, but Marcus Perez, the young man they call MPZ, with his third touchdown catch in the last four games. And a fine play it was, 16 yards. After a 13-play, 74-yard drive, took 618. Tune in this Friday, October 6th for live Indiana High School Athletic Association football on the Varsity Showcase. Fort Wayne South takes on Fort Wayne North. Should be fun between those two squads. You know, when those two get together, you throw out the right. Dean Jackson and Mark Herman with the coverage beginning at 7 Eastern right here on Comcast Local. Now, is that the same Mark Herman that played at Purdue? Yeah, we know. It is, I'm told. So right there, the knowledge that Mark Herman has. There you go. And and, as good a quarterback as he was. And he managed to get Purdue back in the conversation right. again. again. What is going exactly. on? Well, of course, Ball oh, State Indiana. lost to Purdue a couple of weeks ago. But right now, they're deadlocked at 14-all. Garrett Wolf getting some attention on his hand down there. And that's one thing that Joe Novak is concerned about each and every week, keeping that guy healthy and keeping him on the field and allowing him to do what he's done this season, entering the game tonight, still is. He's the nation's leading rusher. You cannot leave Darius Hill that open. First and 10, ball stake. Is Darius Hill taking invisible pills or something? He's, I think. Every time they've thrown the ball, there has not been a Husky within five yards of him. Watch Darius Hill cutting from left to right on your screen. There's, there's nobody near him. And seriously, I mean, nothing against the, uh, the fine linebacking core of the Huskies, but if you're going to count on them to guard Darius Hill, it is going to be a long, long day. I mean, Tim McCarthy's a hell of a football player, but Darius Hill is going to run him up and down this field. They've got to pay more attention to number 88. Certainly a young man that's matured. He's growing up. Brady Hoke says he's committed more than he's ever been. Back to the air, Davis, and it's caught over there in front of the bench, and the catch made by... Dante Love, and for Dante Love in this football game, just the second pass he has caught so far tonight, Rob. That's a pretty powerful hit at the end here by number eight, Mark Ryder. Actually, it was Melvin Rice, the cornerback out there, delivering that lick. Nice hit on Dante Love. Melvin into the defensive backfield when Alva Hansbro went out a couple of weeks ago. With the Hansbro twins, it's uh, tough to have one of them out there playing and the other one on the sidelines with a huge brace on his arm. Second down and two, fake by Davis. He's looking down the middle of the field, had Moss down there, now nobody open. Davis pressured and he is forced out of bounds. And in fact, Davis lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He didn't, in fact, he lost a couple. You know, this is where uh, maybe a more veteran quarterback would know once you get out there and you're standing on the sidelines, just get rid of the ball, just throw it away. Why Why lose a couple of yards, maybe take uh, you know a, a third and two situation, turn it into a third and five situation. It limits the playbook. There's almost no run right now that you consider, and that's gonna put all the pressure right back on Nate Davis's uh, shoulders to complete a pass and get this first down. Davis, 12 for 14, 126 and two scores through the air. 6.01 to go until halftime. Third and four, Ball State on the night, been very good in that department. They are four of five thus far. Davis, pressure coming, unloads. It is caught over the middle. Guess who? Rob, they did it again, did Northern Illinois. They left Darius Hill wide open in a seam. First down, Cardinals. Well, what happened on this one is the middle linebacker, number 53 for the Huskies, Tim McCarthy, comes on a blitz from the left-hand side, right where he left is where Hill was sitting. It was a very easy completion for the young quarterback. He's really looking good out there throwing the ball, isn't he, Ben? Yes, he is. Darius Hill having quite a night. So, too, is Nate Davis, now 13 out of 15 for 135 yards. A product of Bel Air High School. There's a penalty flag on the field. Bel Air, Ohio, Rob, a receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers attended the same high school as Nate Davis. Any idea? Um, Michael Clay. Full start. Offense, number 79, penalized five yards, remains first down. Just want to let Mr. Algy finish there. No, Joey Galloway. Oh, big Joe. Yep. Should have known that, Ohio State product. Brady Hoke talking things over with the last Cardinal player to catch a touchdown, his senior tight end, Steinhaus. Ankle injury prior to the start of the season. Had to work his way back. Just two receptions on the season, but once again, Steinhaus in the 50% range with one touchdown on those two catches. They look for Hill, knocked away. Second and 15 upcoming. Great job defensively here for the Huskies. 
You know, he'll say, that's my bad. No, 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 that's not your bad, young man. That is a beautiful bit of defense from the secondary. So that's what happens when you don't leave him standing there wide open. You get the opportunity to knock the ball away. Ball's at the 39-yard line. Second and long, 15 after that false start penalty on Ball State. Steinhaus getting into the fullback position. Opens up a hole, penalty flag. Bostic got the carry, picked up seven, but we'll have to check the flag. Well, this is, this is just awful timing for the Cardinals. I mean, two penalties now uh, on, this, on this drive. They're moving themselves in the wrong direction. Every time they pick up a couple yards, they've been giving it back to the Huskies. Back him up more here. William Algy will give us the call. Offense, number 84, penalized 10 yards from the previous spot. Steinhaus, the tight end, penalized there, 10 yards. He's going off the field, and uh, Brady Hoke's going to have a couple of words for young Mr. Steinhaus. Well, he was just having a conversation yeah. with him. Now Brady's getting out of the gear. He's like, you know what, this thing's a little too warm for me. we got a hot <laughs> ball game here with five minutes to go, and it's tied up at 14-all. All state. 1-0 in the MAC West, Northern Illinois. They are in the MAC West as well. Nice catch made by Bostic, but he just slipped out there. Simply lost his footing. Northern came in with a record of 1-1 one one in the MAC. Yeah, this is uh, really just a case of the uh, the wet grass reaching up, and that actually is. I, I know this is an oddity. That's real grass down there. Yes. No, no field turf, none of that. This is an actual playing surface created by God, not by man. So. Yes, the, uh, the the rain really is causing havoc out there. Things are getting pretty muddy around the middle. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's created by God or man, but uh, well, I wish somebody would create that kid a T-shirt. Yes. Something we frequently see. <laughs> just part of the college atmosphere, which I'm a huge fan of, and I'm a huge fan of the natural grass surface. It is a lost art. How about Larry Bostic? Got a block, got a stiff arm. He's out to the 40-yard line, but... Ball State will have to kick it away. It was third and 26. We're inside of four minutes until halftime. Adriel Hans Hansborough was uh, the man who was getting blocked out there right at the end of this play. Watch number 12 in the white jersey. First of all, a nice job of good downfield blocking, but watch number 12 in the right-hand side of your screen. Fights off the block, makes the initial contact. Let's a couple of the other Huskies come clean things up for him. So a uh, nice job by Hansborough there to get out and to break up that play. And now it's fourth and long, and we get the uh, one of the best punters in the country out here on the field now. Well, Chris Miller has been absolutely spectacular this season, over 45 yards a punt, entering play tonight. Brad Maynard, of course, a product of this university. Perez will take this on the run. MPZ running out of real estate as Wendell Brown got to him and gave him a ride down to that natural grass down there. 3.13 to go until halftime. That brings Northern Illinois back onto the field. Garrett Wolf will be back in there, and Wolf so far in the game. 13 rushes, 117 yards, and a touchdown. And Perez, he had a touchdown catch last time Northern was on the field. You can visit us online anytime at ComcastLocal.com for detailed schedule, channel, and network information. That's at ComcastLocal.com. Clock running. Three minutes until the half. Bill Horvath, 9 out of 12, 93 yards, and a touchdown thus far. Garrett Wolf with his 14th carry, hurdles over a man, gets to the outside. He's tripped up out there. Ball came loose, and it goes out of bounds. Nice job out there by uh, Spain Cosby, the, uh, line, the true freshman linebacker, number 48, getting out there and uh, knocking him off his feet. This was earlier while Garrett Wolf was on the sidelines. They were out there taping up the finger on his right hand, so we don't know if he hit it up against a helmet or got it caught, uh, you know, in the bottom of a pile, but that young man, the last thing you want to do is have him injured, but his right hand is all taped up, and he's ready to roll. Horvath looking to throw. He does, Ooh. and Eric Keyes says hello to Garrett Wolf. Eric Keyes continues to impress. Flying around the football. Here's another example. 
And this is actually an, an underrated part of Garrett Wolf's game. He's actually a really nice receiver coming from the outside. But uh, Eric Keyes has been so impressive this season. Uh, his head coach, Brady Hoke, saying this is really as healthy as he has been the last couple of years. He's been fighting off injuries from last year, nagging injuries, and now he's really become the leader of that secondary. And hits like that definitely endear his teammates to him. Third and nine, Orvath caught Davis. First down over midfield. Britt Davis inside the 35, down close to the 30-yard line. First and 10, Huskies. All day long. Look at all the time Horvath has. He looked for his first, his second, finally saw his third option at wide receiver. A nice downfield block by Matt Simon as well. 33 yards on that play. This ball incomplete. Clock is stopped with 1.24 to go. You know, incomplete. Incomplete, a word we have not said a lot today. Horvath has only uh, had three balls dropped. The same for Nate Davis. Phil Horvath, 11 out of 15 for 127 and a touchdown. Second down and 10 here for the Huskies. Wolf next to Horvath in that backfield. Garrett Wolf leading the way, in fact. The pass is caught and out of bounds at the 24 yard line. Did he have possession? Keys was over there in the vicinity. Bice was over there. Brady Oak is absolutely yelling at the side judge right now. He did not think that was a completed pass. Thought the ball popped out before possession was had, and they're just having a conversation over there. Matt Simon made the catch, Rob, 85. Here's a look. Watch this now, late in the play right here. Does he have possession of the ball? Boy, that's tough to see from that angle. The uh, head judge is right there. The interesting thing is, well, if it's a completed pass and his knee was down, you don't have to be down by contact. So if he did complete the pass and his knee went down, he was down before that ball came out. But boy, it came out so quick, it almost didn't look like he had possession there. But it, call it a completion. It results in this. Third down and three. Huskies are four of four, and Garrett Wolf gets it. They string him out, but Wolf's got sprinter speed to the 20, spins, and he's taken down, and Garrett Wolf will have the first down for Northern Illinois on his 15th carry of the night. That is just what you get from Garrett Wolf. Watch, he is absolutely trapped here on the outside. I mean, the defenders have a much better angle to the sideline, but Garrett Wolf is so fast that he gets out. Quick spin move at the end there. A fresh set of downs for the Huskies. Garrett Wolf is running wild. 14 carries, 117 yards, and a touchdown. Not bad for a young man who, when he came to Northern Illinois, barely got into school, had to work his tail off to do that academically, and was the ninth running back on the depth chart when he arrived in DeKalb, Illinois. Timeout has been called by Northern Illinois with 57 seconds remaining until halftime in a tie game. It is a first and 10 at the 18 after that first down run by Garrett Wolf. So many accolades this young man has, and he's a Playboy All-American. He's a MAC Player of the Year preseason All-American candidate. You know, one of his good friends, Rob, two of his good friends you will certainly recognize, and college football fans as will as well. One is Troy Smith from Ohio State. The other is the young man he started in front of when play started tonight, Adrian Peterson. Those two met when they were on the Playboy All-American shoot. In fact, they were roommates. They got to be pretty close, and Wolf said, you know, I can relate to him, and he can relate to me because of what we've had to go through, the attention we both get, and certainly both guys are going to end up playing on Sunday next year. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And I think there's a certain spirituality that, that Garrett Wolf will, will always want to talk to you about. I got the opportunity to have a conversation with him at Mac Media Day prior to the season. As a matter of fact, when we got all the media together for a luncheon, the Mac had Garrett Wolf come up to say an invocation before we had lunch. So, I mean, this is a guy that is just known to be this great football player, but on top of that, he's known to be a great person. And that's the combination we need a lot more of in sports today. Absolutely. So far in the football game, over 120 on 15 carries for Wolf. First and 10 inside of a minute until halftime here at Schumann Stadium. Horvath got that ball away, just threw it away into the Ball State band over there, into the tuba section in the back <laughs> row. And Drew Duffin, the uh, freshman defensive end, number 65, gets great pressure right up the middle. The offensive lineman barely slowed him down. 
He gets right in Horvath's face, forcing that uh, toss into the tuba section. It doesn't look like Joe Novak. I, I think he was more of a trumpet guy. Or a saxophone second. guy. <laughs> One of the two. Horvath in this football game, 134 <laughs> yards. Both quarterbacks at the moment with 134. A year ago, Ball State allowed Horvath 21 for 31 for 163 and a score. 50 seconds left in the second quarter. Horvath's got time. He's had it all night. Caught by Wolf. He slips down as Cosby was right there to watch him, but Wolf lost his footing. And again, that's that wet grass down there from the inclement weather we had earlier in this game. The inclement weather, is that a bit of an understatement? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're certainly not used to hurricanes and strong winds. We saw a gust, I have to estimate, was between 60 and 70 miles an hour. That pass is dropped by Britt Davis with 27 seconds left in the half. Now going to be a fourth down situation. So the kicking team coming out on the field. And Chris Nendrick, Nendrick, the uh, opportunity to give his team the lead with very few, uh, very little time left on the clock here to end the first half. Nendrick coming off a week in which he was two of three from the field goal department. Had 12 points. Horvath is the holder, of course. Northern with six touchdowns last week. The kick is on the way, and the kick is no good. So Mendick, who's made 108 consecutive PATs, cannot convert there. I think what we're seeing is that middle of the field is getting so chewed up because of, of how heavy the rain was that Mendick has, has a problem with his plant foot, ends up pushing this one off to the left. And there is a uh, another opportunity now for Ball State if they do want to try to run this one down. But they now the new rule in college football, the clock will stop now, excuse me, start now. Now that uh, the ball has been placed and it looks like Brady Hoke is just willing to let the clock run out, not going to run a play. And we will go to halftime tied at 14. Indeed we will. The two quarterbacks, well, the yardage, dead even. They've both been impressive. One yard separating the two, dead even for the most part. Garrett Wolf, nation's leading rusher, Entering play tonight, 15 rushes, 123 yards, and a touchdown run for Northern Illinois. Perez leads the way in the receiving department, four catches for 48 and a touchdown for Ball State. Darius Hill, five catches for 54 and a touchdown. And Nate Davis, the true freshman, how about his first half of play? 14 out of 17 for 134 yards. Joe Novak has been kind enough to join us. Joe, thanks for doing this. Uh, this ball game certainly has had a little bit of everything in it. Describe what the first <laughs> half was like for you and your team. Chaotic. Chaotic. There was a little bit of everything, you know, and a lot of penalties, a lot of things like that that we got to clean up. Coach, so much is made of uh, of your fine running back, Garrett Wolf, but Phil Horvath, all he's done is go 13 for 19 for 133 yards and a touchdown. Do teams look past how good of a quarterback Horvath is? Well, I think sometimes, you know, he, he led the country last year before until he got hurt. He was completing over 70% of his passes, so he can throw the ball. We just don't want him throwing it 50 times a game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Joe, uh, as far as the game goes, 14 all. Uh, we expected this to be a high-scoring game. Certainly, uh, this may be one of those games last team with the ball wins it. Well, I hope we have it lasted if that's the case. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> as for Garrett Wolf, one more to let you go uh, assess his play in the first half. Well, again, you know, he had the big one called back early, which was too bad. And, of course, he came back at another big one. But, you know, he's been steady. But, again, they're getting nine guys, eight guys up in the box. They're keying on him, which I would too. But uh, if you keep giving it to him enough, you hope he breaks one off. Joe, we appreciate Thanks, your Joe. time. Joe. Thank you. Good luck in the second half and the rest of the season. Joe Novak, the head coach of Northern Illinois, and we appreciate his time very much in our halftime segment. Deadlocked at 14. It's been a very bizarre football game in many ways. We'll explain when we come back. BMW 5 Series, now with optional night vision. Lease a BMW 525i for $4.99 a month, now until September 30th. Celebrate the start of the new season by being a part of Big Time Fun with the Blackhawks. On October 3rd at David Buster's in Addison, it's your chance to meet Blackhawks players and coaches, receive autographs, and test your skills against them on the Million Dollar Midway. Tickets are only
only $40 and include delicious appetizers. All proceeds benefit Chicago Blackhawks charities. For reservations, call 312-455-7033 or register online at chicagoblackhawks.com. Don't delay. Make plans to be a part of Big Time Fun with the Blackhawks on October. The Pontiac G6 Series offers more combinations of options and accessories than there are drivers in America. G6 Sedan, Coupe, or Hardtop Convertible. Choose a shape, then build yours at Pontiac.com. The G6 Sedan starts at 17710, and then you can take it from there. For a chance to win big, see PontiacDrive.com. I help UNICEF because every life is important, and by helping UNICEF, you save a life. If I was lacking in uh, health or food, I would want someone to help me. Helping UNICEF makes me feel like, oh, I, I was needed. That makes me proud. You can't just tell yourself, if I don't help these people, someone else will. We're all together on Earth, and we need to help each other out, because that's what being a civilized person is. Back here at halftime between Northern Illinois and Ball State, tied up at 14 apiece. The nation's leading rusher, Garrett Wolf, so far in the football game, 15 carries for 123 yards. And the true freshman for Ball State, Nate Davis, has been very impressive. 14 out of 17 for 134 and two touchdowns. Welcome upstairs to our office for the night. My name is Ben Holden, joined now by the president of Ball State University, Joanne Gora. Joanne, first of all, thanks for doing this. And, uh, oh, my pleasure. Put into words what the night has been like for you and uh, the people you're with at the football game. It's been a lot of fun. You know, um, the first, the first uh, quarter was really exciting, and then, of course, being cleared out because of the weather was, was an interesting experience. I don't think anybody here has ever had that before, but we're back now. We're doing great this quarter, and I think it's a really exciting game. So, you know, as I said to our crowd at the start of the game, we're 1-0 in the MAC. We hope by in a few hours to be 2-0 in the MAC. And that's certainly very vital, no matter what uh, the record may be coming in. As far as the university, uh, talk about what some of the bigger challenges are right now you're uh, trying to deal with and uh, get resolved to make Ball State a finer place than it already is for the student athletes here. Well, we're excited about a new um, approach that the university is taking to defining our educational experience. Uh, we have some commercials running now, all oriented around the quality of educational experience at the university. Our new tagline is Education Redefined because we think we really redefine education because of the way we get students out of the classroom into the community, solving real world problems and really making a contribution not only to their own intellectual development but to the life of these communities and businesses. So we're really excited about that, Ben. Now from the football standpoint, of course, uh, there are many that can't wait to say goodbye to the press box and I'm not yes. just saying this because you're with me. I've said it on our broadcast. I like it. I'm a fan really? of it. I like things that are vintage. Seriously <laughs> though, what are the challenges uh, that, that have gone into raising the money, getting the money, and allowing Ball State University to make the uh, renovations as soon as the season's over here to Schumann Stadium? We're really excited about the renovation. It'll start the minute the last game ends. Literally, we'll probably have a bulldozer come on it. Uh, come on the field and tear this place down and uh, and we'll be open for business at the start of the football season so everybody's going to be working at a feverish pace people are really excited we've got 16 suites already sold we have 180 club seats that people are talking about and wanting to buy even though they're not for sale yet um, we're excited about the new appearance of the north end it's really going to give a finished look and uh, the new concessions just a whole new look and feel to the stadium, and we think it's really going to be exciting for our fans. One more thing as far as the football game goes, Ball State's tied up. Garrett Wolf is a phenomenal player, but your quarterback's been playing pretty good. Uh, your thoughts on, on the football game and Brady Hoke's team so far? Well, I think Nate Davis uh, has been doing a great job for a true freshman. There's a lot of athleticism and talent out there, and I think you're just seeing the beginning of that. And, and I think Darius Hill and Larry Bostick and uh, Dante Love, all of them have been doing a great job. So it's a fun game. Very nice. We may have to have you come up and be a guest analyst in the booth. Very nicely done. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, Joanne Gore, the president here at Ball State University. We certainly appreciate her time and wish her and everybody here at Ball State a lot of luck in the future endeavors here at the university. We'll come back with more of our halftime right after this short but important timeout. All right, White Sox fans this year, Jack, have been amazing. Record sellouts, record attendance.
Bears fans can't get enough of your team, then stick with Comcast Sportsnet all week long. Mondays, check in on the Bears press conference. Wednesdays and Thursdays, Bears Blitz is your source for the latest news and interviews. Thursdays, get a preview of the week's matchup on Countdown to Kickoff with Musa Muhammad. After every game, Pat Boyle and former Bears Jerry Azuma, Richard Jen, and Dan Jiggins recap all the action on U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. And every night, Sports Night spends more time with the Bears. Bears coverage all week long, only on Comcast Sportsnet. When it comes to safety, we all know how important air is here. But who thinks about it here? Lexus does. With electronic sensors in the RX to warn you when tire pressure is less than optimal. Because if you have enough air here, you may never need it here. See your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer. We continue on here, halftime between Northern Illinois and Ball State. 14 all is our score in a game that's, well, we've seen a little bit of everything here from Muncie <laughs> tonight. Great to have you with us wherever you may be watching tonight, whether it's in Indiana, back in Michigan, or, well, who knows, in the suburbs of Chicago and all points in between. And included in that mix, we'd like to say hi to those watching at one of my favorite names in all of the bar and restaurant <laughs> business in Illinois, Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb, Illinois. We know they got a big crowd watching us tonight. Rob. Fatty, you the man. Yes. <laughs> now, coming into this football game, the man certainly was Garrett Wolf. Yeah. He has lived up to it. So, too, has Nate Davis, who Brady Hoke, after practice yesterday, they well, they decided, you know what, this kid's been way too sharp for us not to play him. He's been phenomenal. We'll see both featured in your highlights coming up right here. Yeah, this was an interesting first half. They did a good job of moving the ball through the air and on the ground. But, of course, when you're talking Garrett Wolf, that's what you talk. The interesting thing is this is a 50-yard run, goes all the way for a touchdown, 51 yards, as a matter of fact, after a 70-yard touchdown run was called back earlier on this drive. But you mentioned it. Nate Davis has done such a great job. The perfect play fake and then getting it up and over to Darius Hill. That was with about six minutes to go in the first half, tied at seven. Then Mother Nature came rolling through. Nobody could block her. Nobody could stop her. After about an hour delay, we got back into action. Dante Love with the tip drill, eventually getting the ball to Steinhaus. That's for a 14-7 lead. But Horvath and the Huskies doing a nice job. Look at all the time. Protection, protection, protection. Get that foot down. That is Perez. Another touchdown catch, his third of the year. And then while you're at it, how about Garrett Wolf? Just try to get him going, trying to stop. This is a nice job of just getting another first down that eventually leading to a field goal attempt that was missed, and that's why we're stuck at 14 right now at the half. Well, those are our halftime numbers. We will me mention Garrett Wolf, 15 rushes, 123 and a touchdown. What do you make of the stats, Rob? Pretty even. Well, look at that 23 for rushing yards, though, for Ball State. Coming in, we knew that was going to be the problem. I mean, the great rushing of Northern Illinois, we expected that. The, uh, the passing by uh, Horvath, just keeping everything underneath, taking what they got him, we expected that. Even throwing the ball, even though it was the freshman, Nate Davis, coming in, we expected that Ball State has got to do a better job of running the ball, especially if they're able to get a lead on this NIU team. They're going to have to try to run the clock and get up that time of possession in the second half. It's been a problem for the Cardinals all season long. They have not been able to finish off games because they are not effective at running the ball, and it's the easiest way to keep that clock moving is just hand it off to somebody. They're hoping that somebody's going to be freshman Quail Lewis, but right now only 23 yards on the ground for the Cardinals. That could come back to bite them at the end of this football game. Seven rushes for him. Nate Davis, though, has been outstanding. So, too, is Phil Horvath, the quarterback for Northern yeah. Illinois. They're virtually dead even and separated by one touchdown. Davis has two, but those two guys have really been sharp. And, of course, when you're Phil Horvath, Garrett Wolf lives in the spotlight, certainly a Heisman candidate leading the country in rushing, but he has been very impressive tonight. Yeah, I mean, really both of these guys, I mean, they're both completing over 75% of their passes right now. They're looking great out there. I question Brady Hoke's decision to start Nate Davis over fifth-year senior uh, Joey Lynch, but all Nate has done to gone out there and absolutely proved me wrong. That's, again, why Brady Hoke stands on the sidelines, and I'm up here in this little tiny box. That's why we're in suits and hairspray and makeup. We'll take a timeout and come back with more of our halftime. It's 14-all between Northern Illinois and Ball State. We're back after this. Hi everybody, Hawk and DJ here. Comcast Sportsnet and the White Sox would like to thank you, the fans, for making this a record break. 
record-breaking season here at U.S. Cellular Field. The 2006 season is now the highest attended season in the history of the White Sox franchise. Breaking the previous record of 2.934 million set back in 1991, which was then the first year of New Comiskey Park. Comcast Sportsnet, the White Sox players, coaches, and the entire organization thank all the great White Sox fans for making this season such a success. The Pontiac G6 Series offers more combinations of options and accessories than there are drivers in America. G6 sedan, coupe, or hardtop convertible. Choose a shape, then build yours at Pontiac.com. The G6 sedan starts at 17,710, and then you can take it from there. For a chance to win big, see PontiacDrive.com. Want more than just the score? Then log on to ComcastSportsNet.com. Read analysis from Comcast Sportsnet's experts that you can't find anywhere else. Get up to the second news headlines. See the day's programming lineup. Check out talent bios and watch video clips featuring the latest info on your teams. Plus, sign up for Sports Extra and Sports Blast email alerts that make you the first to know about breaking news. So what are you waiting for? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com right now. In the midst of a horrible heat wave, the quiet farming town of Bergenson was rocked by a burst of bright light in a series of thunderous booms. This is not just a crop circle. This is a sign. It's a request of some kind. <laughs> Sir, you got to see this. What the When the situation calls for cold refreshment, call for Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Taste the cold. Back here in Muncie, Indiana, Schumann Stadium, the site for our Mid-American Conference game this week. Northern Illinois and Ball State deadlocked at 14 apiece after the first 30 minutes of play. That Well, it took a lot longer than it should have, Rob, because <laughs> of the weather, but certainly everything's fine. Our people are safe. Everybody in the stadium is safe, and we've got a whale of a second half coming up between Northern Illinois and Ball State. Time now to revisit your game keys. Brought to you, as always, by ComcastLocal.com, and we start with the visiting Huskies from Northern Illinois as we take a look back at those and tell us how the Huskies in your opinion, are faring thus far, Rob? Well, I wanted him to control the kid. What I meant by that was with Nate Davis starting, the true freshman, keep him in the pocket, force him to beat you with his arm. They've done a great job. He has barely rushed the ball at all. He really had one rush in the first half, but he's killed them from the pop pocket. So, yes, they haven't let him hurt him with his legs, but his arms have been great. Don't forget to pass the ball. Garrett Wolf has gotten so much attention, I wanted to make sure that they tried to be even. As a matter of fact, they threw the ball more 19 times in the first half than they ran the ball 16 times. So a nice job there and protect the passer. We have not talked about Horvath getting hit, getting pushed down, getting sacked. They've done a great job of keeping the guys off of, uh, off of Horvath. On the other side of the ball for Ball State, the first thing I want them to do is spread it out. They're doing a nice job of that. Nate Davis has hit six different receivers with passes in the first half. Very few dropped balls. There's only a couple of incompletions for Nate Davis. So they did a nice job of making the catch when Davis has gotten them the ball. And don't get full. Play action has hurt them a little bit in the first. I mean, they're focusing so much on Garrett Wolf. It's giving Horvath a lot of time to throw the ball. But they've kept things under control. There's not a lot of long passes going on. There's not a lot of easy plays behind the DBs. So I think they've really done a nice job. And that's why... I think it's exactly because they've all managed to go through all my keys. That's why we're tied at 14. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. All right, we'll take another break, come back. We'll get the third quarter underway between Northern Illinois and Ball State. Cardinals are 1-0 in the MAC West. The Huskies, they are 1-1. Big ball game for the both of these teams. We're back after this. Announcing Max Madsen's massive Mitsubishi Markdown. Increased factory shipments require Max Madsen to mark down every new driven to thrill Mitsubishi model. Every new Gallant, Eclipse, Endeavor, Spider, Lancer, Outlander, Raider pickup, even Evo. Plus every pre driven vehicle. 0% APR financing or cash back from $1,000 to $5,000 to qualified buyers. It's our biggest markdown in our 20 year history. Max Madsen's massive Mitsubishi Markdown. Babe, babe, look. This sounds perfect. Low mileage, loaded, must sell, best offer accepted. This one's a real classic. A real classic. Looking for the right vehicle? There's a channel for people like you. 
Get the whole story at Auto 889. Don't drive all over town looking for your next car. Find exactly what you want without leaving your home. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Auto 889. It's fast. It's easy. It's now. Comcast keeps you connected with the power of 100% pure broadband. We're leading the way, so you won't miss a thing. Like with our fastest high-speed internet ever, or 100% digital cable with HDTV, on-demand, DVR, and digital voice. And it's our promise to bring new technologies home to you first. From Chicago to Aurora, South Bend to DeKalb. Building the network that connects Chicagoland. Comcast. 14-all our score as we're getting set to begin quarter number three. Ben Holden, Rob Otto, and all of our crew. Ball State, Northern Illinois, a season ago. Ball State went on the road and they took care of business in commanding fashion against these Huskies. Northern Illinois has been ticked about it all year. They've got an opportunity here tonight to try and turn the tables in this series. A long-running rivalry between these two Mac West rivals. And nothing has been solved as of yet. 14 all our scores were set to begin the third quarter. Yeah, this one is going to come down. We said it almost the entire time that we thought it was going to come down to maybe the last possession of this game. Both of these teams averaging over 28 points a game. So they're basically sitting right on their average right now, sitting here tied at 14. Now this is going to be a more traditional. After coming back from an hour-long weather delay, things were, you know, those last three minutes of the first quarter and into the second quarter, things just kind of weren't in sync. Took the guys a little while to warm up. Now this is their usual warm-up coming back from after the half, and we're going to see a Joe Novak squad as well as Brady Hoke's team getting ready out there. They're, they're ready now. They're, they're physically ready. This is what they're used to doing. I mean, sports athletes are so used to just getting into their groove, doing things their way. This is normal now, so expect uh, Nate Davis and the Cardinals to come on out here and uh, try to put some points right back on the board. Well, looking at Davis, Rob, gets me thinking. I, I really think, and, and this is our third time in seeing this young man play, he's certainly a guy that, that Ball State is going to build around, no question about that. Down the road, this kid's going to do a lot of damage in this conference before it is all said and done. And if you think about this, consider this. Tomorrow when the NFL starts, there will be five former MAC quarterbacks starting for National Football League teams. The newest member of that fraternity is Bruce Gradkowski from Toledo. Of course, he's playing for the injured Chris Sims down in Tampa. So Nate Davis, very promising player. Phil Horvath, well, he's done some great things in his career, and he's not quite done yet. He's a fighter. He's a battler. He's got Garrett Wolf in the backfield. Wolf has rushed for 123 yards. And a touchdown so far on 15 carries as he leads the nation in rushing yardage. And that's just got to be tough for a guy like Horvath. I mean, you think about it, all these kids coming all the way through high school, they were the cream of the crop. They were the best of the best. And now to kind of have to play second fiddle, as long as you win the game, all these guys will tell you they are able to set the ego aside. But when given the opportunity, don't think that Phil Horvath wouldn't like to be the guy that everybody looks up and said, that's the reason they won this football game. Absolutely. Second half underway. Davis from his five. Britt Davis, he's got some room up the right sideline. He gets out to the 30 and drags a couple of tacklers out near the 35-yard line. Alex Nip came in, number 41, to help out on the kick coverage team for Ball State. He's a fine freshman that plays for this Cardinal squad as well, number 41 in red. You know, in a game when both offenses have almost been moving the ball at will through the first half, it could end up being some weird play on special teams or a big play on defense. That can make the difference. So, you know, don't wait until you get the opportunity to go and keep your eyes away from the screen because anything could happen at any time with either one of these teams. Garrett Wolf, the lone setback in that backfield for the Huskies. Horvath will turn and hand off to Wolf, and he'll lose yardage. He is wrapped up and taken down in the backfield. Riley Laramore, the fifth-year senior, got him. Nice job by that defensive line to get in there. Laramore just coming straight down the line. Watch Laramore coming right off the right-hand side. Just drifts straight down the line, and a nice job by uh, Keys to come up. Started filling the hole that Garrett Wolf was looking at, forced him to slow down a little bit, and Laramore was able to gallop him up from the backside. First two games were very productive of the season for Laramore. Three tackles against Eastern Michigan, four against Indiana, making an impression here. Wolf trying to get free, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage about 
a foot and a half past it, so it's going to bring up a third and nine upcoming for Northern Illinois. Another fifth-year senior, William Wise, the nose tackle for the Cardinals. Watch big number 74 at the end of this play. Comes in from underneath. Look at him. Backside pursuit gets just enough to hold on to Garrett Wolf's leg, and now it's third and very long for Garrett Wolf and the Huskies. You know, Rob John, the offensive coordinator, said, you know, they're going to send the managers after him. <laughs> they're going to send everybody. And he said he'd do the same thing. Exactly. Over the middle, caught. Davis has it. He's across midfield, and he puts a stiff arm out there for Trey Bice, and he's finally wrestled out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Davis stepping up big tonight for the Huskies. Well, this is what happens when the Cardinals defense, they blitz a lot. And what that does is it leaves you in man-to-man -man coverage. And uh, Trey Bryce is also coming back from an injury. He's doing a nice job out there. But when you were on man-to-man -man coverage, you see that blitz coming from the outside. Just getting rid of the ball was Horvath. But if you're able to get rid of that ball, it can turn into a big play like it just did for the Huskies. First down and 10 from the 48 of Ball State. Wolf. Left side, find some room, using that speed. Garrett Wolf to the outside, trying to outrun McClure. Wolf did it once, can he do it again? Cuts back, touchdown, Garrett Wolf, his second of the night. This one from 48 yards. <laughs> this guy is just amazing. I mean, it just looks like everybody should be able to catch him because it doesn't look like he's running that fast. And for the second straight big carry, he just runs past Marcus McClure. Look at a great job. That's a beautiful cut right there. And right here, there are three separate Cardinals that have an angle on Garrett Wolf. He just speeds past McClure and then cuts back at the last second. A huge touchdown. And now the lead, once again, goes to Northern Illinois. Garrett Wolf for the eighth consecutive game. But the kick is no good. Oh. And the point after streak for Chris Nendick ends at 108 consecutive PATs. But the story as it's been from the opening kickoff in this game, the nation's leading rusher, Garrett Wolf, has struck again. Hyundai is taking on Honda and Toyota with the Hyundai Challenge. We're out to prove that our new Sonata is the best value running. Here are the stats. More standard safety features and interior space than a Honda Accord. America's best warranty and $4,500 less than an Accord. You owe it to yourself to check out the fuel-efficient Hyundai Sonata. Before you spend too much on a Honda or Toyota, take the Hyundai Challenge today. Get a new Sonata V6 with up to 2,500 cash back or 1.9% APR at your Hyundai dealer. But hurry, offer ends October 2nd. You never know who's going to drop by on Chicago Tribune Live. Look behind you. Know, uh, Look behind you as we shoulder. speak. <laughs> you have a blue furry creature stalking you. Tiger Woods, Reggie Bush, Ozzy Guillen, Michael Barrett. God, you're a big boy. <laughs> Ozzy Smith, Danica Patrick, Dale Talent, Ben Gordon, Bill Walton. I have reached the status of being on cloud 11. Chicago Tribune Live, presented by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers, weekdays at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Well, Rob Otto, I blame it on the weather. Chris Nendick came into this game with 106 consecutive point afters, made the first two in the game, of course, to push it to 108. So Miami's John Scott, their former place kicker from 95 to 98, his record is safe, at least for the time being. He set the MAC record during that time frame when he made 112 consecutive PATs. This is so odd. We've had a missed PAT in every game we've done this year. I mean, it's it's a rarity, and yet we've seen it every week. And that's a game that Ball State lost to Indiana right here at Schumann Stadium. They lost 24-23. They had a missed PAT. Now, this young man, Mendick, is just hoping that that missed PAT does not cost his team the game later on. Well, Brian Jackson, the kicker for Ball State, he's been consistent, missed one every year. We were here, of course, when he did that earlier this year. Here's Dante Love trying to break free. Dante Love to the 30, oh! takes a shot as a cannonball was shot in right there on that coverage team after Dante Love, but he is a tough customer, is number 86. I think the number came through so fast. I think it was number 29, who's Matt Schiffler, the freshman tailback 
Watch coming from the left side of your screen and just laying the wood. Nope, it was number 85. It was uh, wide receiver Matt Simon, the Rob, sophomore I, wideout. I think that was the kicker, Nendick. Really, you think that was 25? I'd like to see it again. Well, you know what? You get upset for missing a PAT, take it out of the other guy's kick return. I would really like to see that again. And hopefully we'll get an opportunity. Because Simon is 85, you're right about that, but didn't look like he was as big as Simon. Down the seam, wide open, making the catch is Darius Hill. Dustin Utschick, the safety back there, made the catch, the senior, or made the tackle on the catch by Darius Hill. Beg your pardon. So Darius Hill continues to have a big night. Six catches, over 60 yards. Rob, here it is. Let's watch if it's 25 that comes in. That was the kicker, Nick. <laughs> Indeed, it was. <laughs> I miss a PAT. You have to You're pay for it. You're paying the price, man. <laughs> they fumble the ball. Davis and Bostic miscommunication comes free. And Northern Illinois right there. But Bostic, wow. it looks, came up with that ball. That is very fortunate if your ball stayed. They took so much time after this dropped ball on the bad handoff. Nate Davis actually tries to pick the ball up. That is a huge mistake. At that point, just fall on the ball, lose the couple of yards. That almost turned into a huge play for the Huskies. But Nate Davis and Larry Bostic managed to gobble up that ball, and the Cardinals live to fight another day. Ball at the 49-yard line. Second down, and we'll call it 14. The draw play to Lewis. That did not fool anybody, and he picked up a yard. So McQuail Lewis, eight carries, 24 yards, and that's going to bring up a third and long for Ball State. So once again, the uh, weight goes on the shoulders of uh, the true freshman, Nate Davis. His favorite target today has been Darius Hill. Six catches for 76 yards and a beautiful first quarter touchdown. And uh, somehow the very, very large Mr. Hill has gotten lost in the secondary. We'll see if the Cardinals can take advantage of that again. Terry Moss, just one catch in the game. Dante Love has two over the middle and Matt, beg your pardon, Darius Hill streaking across the field. They had a receiver wide open across the middle. That's what caught my eye, and Hill couldn't make the catch, so they'll have to kick it away. Well, Darius Hill was open as well, making a nice uh, up and out towards the sideline. But Nate Davis, you can see how upset with himself he is. He had his receiver there. He had the matchup he wanted, but he just overthrew Darius Hill. So Chris Miller on to punt, and back to return it, Greg Turner. And Rob, I have to believe I saw Turner's parents on the way into town. They were decked out Northern Illinois gear and his red number 17 uniform. And to nobody's surprise, in their Yukon was a Husky in the back seat. I'm serious. Getting the game. Number, number uh, 17 shaved in the side of it? No, no. Okay. Getting the game with on demand from Comcast. Choose from a library of free movies, sports, news, and more, and start them when you want. Rob's a big fan of this. Huge Plus, fan. Pause, rewind, or fast forward the game. Only with on demand, free with Comcast Digital Cable. It is TV on your terms. Call 1-888-COMCAST for more details. This is how they rank. Sliced bread, then video on demand. I think those are the two greatest inventions known to mankind. You put that above the wheel? Baby, listen, you don't need a wheel if you could sit and watch on demand. <laughs> Here goes Garrett Wolf. He's got blockers, 35, 40. He's still on his feet down the sideline. Go Wolf gets another block. He cuts it back across the grain. Garrett Wolf inside the 15 yard line. A huge run. He is well over 200 yards now. He is absolutely electric, number one. You've got to give so much credit to him. I mean, as great a young runner as this is, look at the offensive line. I mean, just look at the absolute huge hole. And how about the downfield blocking? You've got all sorts of them. Jarrett Carter is down there. Beautiful block by Ryan Gierke at the end. And this just young kid, his vision is amazing. He sees everything. He hits the perfect cutback lane every chance he gets, Ben. 75-yard run for Wolf, 247 yards on the ground for wow. Garrett Wolf. Well over his average, 
and Wolf continues to take the football, his 20th carry in the game. Rob, he doesn't even look like he's breathing no. <laughs> a little bit, but he doesn't look like he's breathing all that no, much. No, 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 not at all. I just think that's such a great camera angle. Look how huge the offensive linemen are. I mean, his helmet doesn't even come up to their chin straps. Well, big number 62, Doug Free. Six foot seven, that guy. They call him Doug Freak. I mean, if you ask Garrett Wolf, one of the first things he'll tell you is, you know what, my success is not possible without guys on the offensive line, without receivers blocking downfield, and the play clock had expired, so they'll back him up five yards. It'll be second and 13. I almost think they were willing to give up five yards there just to give uh, Garrett Wolf another 10 Still seconds to breathe. <laughs> yeah, you might be right about that, partner. <laughs> Well, so far this season, Wolf, 171 against Ohio State, 196 against Ohio, 263, which is the high in NCAA Division I this season against Buffalo. Last week, 198. Garrett Wolf tonight, 20 carries, 249 yards. Wow. We still got eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter in this one. Now he did rush for 280 as Britt Davis is lined up at quarterback. Again, Davis down near the 10. Two years ago on this field, Wolf did rush for 280 against Ball State. He's hurt. And that left arm indeed, Rob. Yeah, he's holding his left arm up against his body there. Britt Davis not looking very good trying to limp off to the sidelines. Well, four catches, 74 yards. He's the only other player to rush the ball tonight aside from Wolf. Yeah, watch right at the end of this play. Yeah, it's right at the end. He lands kind of funny as he slides in toward the 10-yard line. Third down and 10. Horvath looking. Nobody open. Davis careful there. 87, the tight end, nearly a block in the back. Now Horvath puts his head down, and he runs head on to the defensive back. Trey Bice was down there. And Phil Horvath able to get a couple of more yards. Clock running, seven and a half left in the third. They'll bring on the field goal units. Yeah, um, this is not really a strength for Phil Horvath. <laughs> I mean, he does a nice job of scrambling. I mean, he's got his mobility in terms of moving in the pocket, but yeah, that doesn't look like a guy that's used to putting his head down and trying to knock people over. So Chris Nendick, who missed that point after, will give it a shot here. 26 yards away, kick is up, and Nendick is good with seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. So the point after streak snap, but you know what? He'll start a new one. 23-14, Northern Illinois on top. Joe Novak's team up by nine. Garrett Wolf with a 75-yard run, the key on that drive. Bears fans can't get enough of your team, then stick with Comcast Sportsnet all week long. Mondays, check in on the Bears press conference. Plays and Thursdays, Bears Blitz is your source for the latest news and interviews. Thursdays, get a preview of the week's matchup on Countdown to kick off with Musa Muhammad. After every game, Pat Boyle and former Bears Jerry Azuma, Richard Jen, and Dan Jiggins recap all the action on U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. And every night, Sports Night spends more time with the Bears. Bears coverage all week long, only on Comcast Sportsnet. You only have 96 hours. The Dodge 96-hour clearance event. From right now until October 2nd, get our best offer of the year. 0% financing for 72 months and make no monthly payments until March 2007. Only 96 hours to get the best deals on Dodge Durango with the best interior room in its class. And only 96 hours to get Dodge Grand Caravan featuring exclusive stow-and-go seating and storage. The Dodge 96-hour clearance event. Remember, it's only 96 hours. This offer ends October 2nd. Halfway through this third quarter, Ben Holden, Rob Otto, and all of our crew, the fans, well, they had a good crowd when this football game started, Rob, but certainly the weather, the wind gusts, the very dangerous conditions that blew through here about an hour and a half ago scared a lot of those fans off. So if you're watching in Muncie somewhere, glad to have you with us. Again, Rob, our favorite bar in DeKalb, Illinois, Fatties. Fatties! You're watching us from there where they tape the fine program done by Brad Hoy and Inside Husky Sports. I watched that yesterday with Joe Novak and took in a little bit of the sights and the sound. Now Dante Love, he's standing in his goal line. They need Dante Love to come up, Rob, so far in this football game. He's made just two catches for 25 yards. Northern's done a fantastic job yeah. taking him out of the game plan so far. Well, and, and even something like this on a kick return or a punt return, Dante Love can be very dangerous. And uh, 
He has uh, yet to really uh, start spreading his wings here for the Cardinals. See what he can do here from the goal line. Love gets away out near the 30-yard line goes Dante Love. And Ball State, that's where they'll start here with 6.50 to go in the third quarter, trailing by nine. Coming up tomorrow, a full afternoon of college soccer on Comcast Local. At one, Joe Mazika and my good friend Eric Hess. Full game coverage, Indiana and Michigan. Then at three, yours truly, along with Joe Jason, we'll have the analysts work on that game. We'll take in Michigan State and Purdue. Coming up one and three Eastern tomorrow, right here on Comcast Local. 45 left here in this third quarter. Davis with three wide. This game is uh, by no means done. Nate Davis just had to make sure to keep his head in the game. Hands off, huge hole from McQuail Lewis, and he is out near the 45. They'll get him down at the 44 yard line. Big game for Lewis there. Well, you know, that's Quail saying, you know what? There's more than one uh, running back in this game. Look at the great job by the offensive line to open up a huge hole on the left side. And a great job by McQuail getting through there. Now, Rob, we've talked about this a couple times. Schneider, Justin Schneider, who Brady Hocus said to us, he may be our MVP. Yeah. He had to shift around on that line with the injury to Cornwell this week. So he deserves a little credit, as does the entire front for Ball State. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the run game going so far in this one. Lewis, over That'll 40 help. yards on the ground. Indeed, it will. And McQuail Lewis. Toting the pig once again, 10 carries in the game for Lewis. There's 35, Dustin Utschick. And you know, Dustin, maybe somewhere down the road should consider being a scout. Why is that? Because there was an interesting story that I found among the many things I found about Garrett Wolf this week. He told his dad, Utschick did, when Wolf and he were freshman roommates, if this kid gets on the field, <laughs> look out, he's going to be special. Very instinctive, I suppose, if nothing else. Davis has time, fires, and Dante Love wow. just couldn't reel it in. It would have been his third catch. You don't see that out of Dante very now, often. There's, there's something going on with Dante Love tonight because you're absolutely right. He is sure-handed. He is big play guy, and we haven't seen it. Watch at the end of this play. Instead of reaching his hands out to grab this ball, Oh, and that's exactly what, boy, I thought he tried to catch it with his shoulders and it bounced off his pad. Dante Love plays this one perfectly. Got up in the air, was hanging there when the ball arrived, got both hands on the ball, and it just bounced off his hands. Brady Hoke has got nothing to say to <laughs> Dante Love on the sidelines. Third and six, Ball State on third down tonight. They are five oh. of eight and make it five of nine. Looking for McQuail Lewis. They'll have to kick it away. Yeah, Quail had a great opportunity. I don't know if he heard the footsteps or if he started running before he caught this one, but Quail was out there on the outside. Probably would have been a first down for the Cardinals. And now all of a sudden, Nate Davis only had three incomplete passes for Brady Hoke in the, uh, in the entire first half. He's had three since halftime. So uh, Brady Hoke is seeing that uh, the completion percentage that he was very proud of of his young quarterback, Nate Davis, starting to fall apart here in the second half. Well, we'll keep our eyes the next time when Ball State gets the ball back. May we see Joey Lynch in this football game as Miller, the all mac punter, is in. They will let it go, and can he pin him? B.J. Oh. Hill made the effort, and B.J. safely into the goal post. <laughs> Thank goodness for the padding. We haven't seen B.J. on the offensive side for Ball State tonight, but making him his presence known on the special teams. Time out on the field. We'll come back with some very historic news about Garrett, Garrett Wolf after this. There's a natural resource that exists everywhere on the planet that could help end poverty, yet it's been largely ignored. That resource is women. In many of the world's poorest communities, their potential often remains untapped. I am powerful. It's a source of power the world can no longer afford to overlook. She has the power to change her world. You have the power to help her do it. Every day, someone like you waits for an organ donation while life passes by. new organ tissue registry. Even if you're already a donor, you must sign up again. Go to lifegoeson.com today.
With your help, the wait will not be in vain. 5.08 left in the third, Ben Holden, Rob Otto, Garrett Wolf there. Tied an NCAA record earlier tonight as the fastest player to reach 1,000 yards. He did it in five games. Rob, here's his resume tonight. He's, uh, he's, not, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. I mean, you got to give a lot of credit to that offensive line. But Garrett Wolf, it's his vision that impresses me. I mean, look at the way he looks and watches his blockers, his cutback lanes. I mean, that's the thing. And in addition to that, you talk to both coaches when they talk about Garrett Wolf, they say the same thing. Yeah, it's great to have vision, but you have to be able to have the speed and tenacity to do something with it. And he does. Only eight guys in the history of NCAA football have gotten to 1,000 yards in five games. Garrett Wolf just became the eighth one to do it. 249 on the ground. Wolf looking to add to it, and he's out to the 25. How's that? He even has time while he's running to adjust his face mask and then decide where he wants to go. You know, this will come as no surprise, <laughs> Robin. I'm talking to some of the Northern Illinois people. His his one of his guys he looks up to. Yeah, you got a face mask there, <laughs> and then you're right, adjusted it. Yeah. His his uh, one of his heroes growing up and still today is the fine running back out of Florida State, the Atlanta Falcons, Warwick Dunn. And you can see a lot of it in there. I mean, yep. it's, it's the same kind of uh, smaller stature, but you learn to go off of your blocks. Caught by Davis, second tight end. He's got a first down, does Brandon Davis. There has been no slow down this Husky offense here, really since we got going after the close to an hour suspension, 53 minutes. It is still pretty interesting to see. I mean, we, you know, you talk to uh, the offensive coordinator um, of the Northern Illinois Huskies, John Baum, we talked to him earlier this week, and he said, you know, we really do want to be a 50-50 team. Half pass, half run, and that's exactly what they're doing. They run, they've run the ball 24 times. They've passed the ball 21 times today. It's perfect balance for the Huskies. Horvath. And that is caught for a gain of close to six yards over there in front of the Ball State bench and the catch made by Jarrett Carter, the senior. Great job by Carter to reach out and grab this one. Just a little bit of time is all you need. A quick five-stop drop and then getting it out there. Carter makes the nice catch. It's close to the uh, first down marker. I mean, when you can get five yards on first down, that's all you're shooting for. Well, like Garrett Wolf, he had to sit behind Michael the Burner Turner and that young man right there, Jarrett Carter, he had to wait and learn from Sam Hurd, who was the... Huskies, great wide receiver in the last couple of years now with the Dallas Cowboys. Speaking of Wolf, up the gut, Garrett Wolf is close to the first down, but according to that spot, Rob, you might have a little better vantage point than me. Looks a little short. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is here, they're, they're spotting the ball. See, I didn't think Garrett Wolf was down. I thought he was actually lying on top of one of the defenders and then got enough to get to the first down, but from where they're spotting it, it looks like the Huskies are about a half yard short here. This is going to be a key third down for the Cardinals defense. If they can stop the Huskies here, keep this a nine-point game. Well, the Huskies are six for eight on third down. That wow. last carry for Wolf, three yards. He's at 258. And they got the first down here. They'll move the sticks. Clock runs. Once they give them the ready for play signals, we're just over three minutes left here in the third quarter. Quick little keeper. All you uh, tell your offensive line, listen, if you guys can't give me eight inches of push, then you don't deserve to be out there. So Horvath just got behind that big beef in front of him and got the first down for the Huskies. Horvath, 166 through the air. And that was his first carry. Joe Novak liked the way his team progressed last week in their victory, got to play a ton of guys. Over 60 players saw the field and just wants to see this team continue to get better and better downfield. Horvath oh. is caught! What a wow. catch turned in, and that is Britt Davis, who not too long ago was holding that arm, and nothing wrong with it there. A big gain, the pass from Horvath to Davis, 41-yard strike. Really well defended by Trey Bice, and just enough time for Horvath. Look at that beautiful pass, an absolute perfect extension by Britt Davis. Up in the air, over Bice. Great job of holding on to the ball when he hit the ground. It is first and 10 from the 11-yard line now. A little congratulations from the coaching staff for Britt Davis on that one. Career night for him. He came in with 76 total yards. Now 115 to the air once again. Here's older brother Brandon. Touchdown! 
Huskies into the end zone. Davis and Davis <laughs> teaming up. One brother says, you know what, I can do it. The older one says, I'm gonna show you how to do it a little bit better well, you know what, and find it in the end zone. You know what, the older one says, listen, youngster, I'll let you run the 60-yard route. Yeah. I'll run the three-yard out and get the glory points. What do you say? Yeah. That is, uh, that is experience over youthful enthusiasm. Nice job here, and it's that play action. Absolutely everybody froze on it. Horvath has all day long, gets it out there. Nice job of holding onto that ball, but uh, B. Davis gets into the end zone. Both of them. <laughs> well, the new streak has officially begun. That is one consecutive PAT for Nednik. Yes. So <laughs> Nednik gets back on the right track, and Horvath, who has had he has had a ton of time. They have yet to really get to him all night. Brandon Davis, the touchdown, diving to get in and entering the football game. He had three catches for a grand total of 48 yards. And tonight he's got three for 35 and a touchdown. And a year ago, just three catches, 48 yards. So the first career touchdown for one Brandon Davis, a native of Broadview, Illinois. Makes it 30 to 14. Northern on top with 2.25 left in the third quarter. Tonight's start of the fourth quarter is brought to you in part by Comcast Cares Day. From Comcast next Saturday, October 7th, is Comcast Cares Day. Across the Midwest, more than 6,000 Comcast employees, family members, and friends will volunteer at 59 different projects that help strengthen local communities. Nationwide, 30,000 volunteers will take part in Comcast Cares Day, making it one of the largest single-day corporate volunteer efforts in America. Closing in on that fourth quarter. Still 2.20 left to go here in the third. Dante Love looking for space. some room, he does, and he's wrapped up and taken down by Carter, the wide receiver. In the third quarter, Rob Otto, Ball State a whopping 40 yards, Northern Illinois 229 yards put together, and a good chunk of that from Garrett Wolf. he had a 75-yard run, but Horvath has been impressive as well. He's got 218 through the air so far. Yeah, it really has been the, uh, the, the big difference for both of these teams this year is their ability to hold on the ball. Only the only turnover that hurt anybody was a first quarter fumble by Garrett Wolf that the uh, Cardinals were able to take advantage of. But beyond that, both teams protecting the ball really well. Might be one of these defenses need to step up. Keep it on the ground. They'll pick up five on the carry. Will the Cardinals? Larry Bostic with the toad of the pig there, his fifth carry, and Bostic five rushes, 17 yards. You know, Rob, as good as the Ball State offensive line looked to us the first couple yeah, of weeks, yeah. it's somewhat shocking to me they haven't been able to run the ball better than they have. No, it, it is really shocking, actually. I mean, their pass protection has been fantastic, but it has not been able to translate into a consistent running game for this team. And now we're going to have to see a lot of that pass protection because you're down by two scores. You know NIU will likely score again, so Brady Hope knows that he's got to get his offense in gear, get some points on the board, because chances are it's going to take a lot more than 30 to win this ball game. Lewis Johnson made that last catch for a first down. That's the second catch in this game for Johnson. Davis right back, fires once again. Wide open, Darius Hill with another big gator, big chunk of yardage. Close to 20 on that play, and Darius Hill closing in on 100 yards receiving tonight. And a hurry up offense here. Uh, Brady wants to make sure to keep those chains moving as quickly as he can, trying to keep NIU's defense back on their toes. Back to the air, Hill's got it again, puts his head down, gets out of bounds as he was bumped over there, colliding over there with Melvin Rice, the sophomore cornerback for Northern Illinois. And Darius Hill with eight grabs in the football game, he is now at 100 yards in this contest. Well, he's like one yard shy. I beg your pardon, he's at 99 in the game. This after four catches and 108 yards against North Dakota State last week at Purdue. He had five for 88 and a touchdown from Davis. The week before, two for 50 and a touchdown. In the opener, he had 64 yards on four catches. Coming a big factor in their offense. They swing it out, and Larry Bostic took a shot. As the linebacker got out there, that's your 
your good buddy McCarthy there out there, Rob. There is old number 53 laying the wood. This is a nice job, actually. It's a perfect play call because with the uh, blitzing linebackers coming from the outside, wow. Did you see Bostic's head snap back on that hit by McCarthy? Ouch. Third and four. Davis has time. Now fires, and it is incomplete. Looking for his go-to guy, Darius Hill, with those eight catches and 99 yards. And if you're Ball State, you're not going to punt it at this point. You're going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, too deep. I mean, you end up punting this one, even with a great punter like Miller, more than likely going to end up in the end zone. So you're only giving up a few yards by going for it here from the 35-yard line. So uh, Brady Hope got a lot of plays up his sleeve. I think this might actually be an opportunity. With all the pressure coming from the outside, how about spread everybody wide, let your young mobile quarterback try and do a draw right up the middle and see if he can get to the first down mark. Remember on opening night, fourth down, from the 31 yard line they gave it to Dante Love not this time they fire Hill could not make the catch as Davis has to pull himself up off the turf Darius Hill has been the go-to guy tonight but couldn't get to it it goes over to the Huskies on downs with 32 seconds left in the quarter safety blitz on this one uh, coming from the outside see Brady Hook a little upset with what's going on but that was a, an opportunity he wanted to take Rather not punt that away, take the opportunity, but a perfect time for an all-out blitz. Left man-to-man -man coverage, but Davis didn't have the time to get that one across the middle, and now it's turned over on downs to see if the Huskies can do anything with it. Barring a penalty, this will likely be the final play in this third quarter, because indeed they will give it to Garrett Wolf. He goes right up the middle and picks up three, and that will do it for the third quarter Garrett Wolf with 261 yards on the ground on 23 carries tonight. He is something special, ladies and gentlemen. Northern leads it after three quarters, 30 to 14. We're back with a fourth quarter right after this. Bears fans, when the game is over, turn to U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live for in-depth post game coverage. Our All-Pro crew breaks down all the excitement, complete with player grades and expert analysis. Plus, we're live outside the locker room with instant player reactions, inside the press room for all the post-game news conferences, and we'll have a preview of the next big matchup for the Monsters of the Midway. U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live after every Bears game, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Who's counting on your brakes today? Your brakes are too important to trust to just anyone. That's why you should come to Midas now. At Midas, brake pads or shoes are just $89.95 per axle installed. Be safe. Just a Midas touch. Honest. Que yo siempre he dicho las cosas como tienen que ser y, y el que le gustó le gustó, el que no le gustó, problema para mí. Family man. Lo único que yo tengo en, mi, en esta vida, lo único que yo tengo en mi vida son mis tres hijos. Eso es lo único que yo tengo. Champion. Ozzy Guillén on Mi Manera, The Encore. A one night marathon of all five Spanish episodes on Ozzy Guillén's life and career. Presented by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers and United Auto Insurance Group. Monday night at 7, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Ben Holden, Rob Otto, and you can add to the growing list of accomplishments for Garrett Wolf. He is now the all-time leading touchdown scorer in Northern Illinois history. He's got two tonight. He moved past Michael the Burner Turner. He leads him in all-time rushing touchdowns as well. A look into the eyes of Garrett Wolf. Caught by Perez, man fell down, and Perez is able to get that first down. It's all clicking right now for the Huskies as they lead it by 16 here, just underway in the fourth quarter. Everything is just looking perfect here. And look at that offensive line. They are absolutely manhandling the Cardinals. Horvath, I mean, has, has enough time to knit himself a sweater back there before he throws the ball. They're doing a great job. And Perez, as you mentioned, missed all of last season with injury. He has come back, and he is putting together a fantastic day uh, receiving for Northern Illinois. 
Wolf, the single setback. They don't believe in a fullback in DeKalb, Illinois. Garrett Wolf gets it again, makes a move, made a defender look silly there, gets around another. Here goes Garrett Wolf once again, his third rushing touchdown in this football game. He continues to amaze and excite. He is over 300 yards on the ground, a 53 yard run there. And Garrett Wolf, I mean, you just think that you'd be able to knock this guy down by just breathing in him hard. Look at that move right there. And then getting around Eric Keyes. Are you kidding me? Eric Keyes knocks people out when he hits them. A beautiful run, 315 yards and three TDs on 24 carries for Garrett Wolf. Whole team celebrating with him down there. And Garrett Wolf, Rob, with the rush there is now turned in the number three all-time rushing performance in a single game at Northern Illinois. He owns the record at 325. He may get that tonight. LaShawn Johnson and now Garrett Wolf once again in the record books. The new Chicago AT&T Yellow Pages. More about the city. More complete. More useful. More things to do, more places to go, more maps, more savings, more web, more than a name change. Introducing the Chicago AT&T Yellow Pages in the new Chicago Plus, published by R.H. Donnelly. People in Chicago looked to us more than 33 million times last year. Get ready for more. Celebrate the start of the new season by being a part of Big Time Fun with the Blackhawks. On October 3rd at David Buster's in Addison, it's your chance to meet Blackhawks players and coaches, receive autographs, and test your skills against them on the Million Dollar Midway. Tickets are only $40 and include delicious appetizers. All proceeds benefit Chicago Blackhawks charities. For reservations, call 312-455-7033 or register online at chicagoblackhawks.com. Don't delay. Make plans to be a part of Big Time Fun with the Blackhawks on October 3rd. 37-14, Northern Illinois on top. Garrett Wolf, 24 rushes, 315 yards, and three touchdowns. Wolf now with 50 career touchdowns at Northern. Go ahead, Rob. Well, I, I, just, I just can't believe that I just saw him totally juke Eric Keyes out of his jockstrap and walk his way into the end zone. Now, in the last two games that Wolf has played against Ball State, he had 280 yards back in 2004. He didn't play last year. Tonight, 315, 595 <laughs> yards. Rob Otto, thank you very much for the quick math on that one for Garrett Wolf. That's, uh, that's average. <laughs> My goodness. That is a season for some guys. You know what? In those two games. It's a career for some guys. In those two games, Garrett Wolf has rushed for more yardage than the entire backfield of the Ball State Cardinals this season Well, in five games. Now let's consider this too, Rob. Among the many things we have been trying to mention as Moss takes that in the end zone, Garrett Wolf entering this football game tonight, 119 Division 1A teams. You take Northern out of the mix. Garrett Wolf had rushed for more yardage than 104 teams in this nation. Unbelievable. And, uh, I'm thinking adding 315 to it today uh, probably still keeps him in the top 100. This is just amazing right here. Here's the first guy that's going to miss Garrett Wolf, and then Eric Keyes right there. Just silly. Just absolutely silly. And listen, I hate to keep pointing this out, but I think just about on every single touchdown, Garrett Wolf has burned past Marcus McClure, yes. number 23, and just makes McClure look like he's standing still. Joey Lynch is in the ball game. He throws, and it's complete to B.J. Hill. This is just... Um, this is just Brady Hoke trying to spark something from his offense. Just something from his offense. Put the fifth year senior in there. Really, Nate Davis is not like he had a bad game. It's just that everything has gone wrong for Ball State this half. That pass Or should I say, everything's gone right for the Huskies this well, half. Well, yeah, when you got Garrett Wolf back there and it's caught by Hill. Is that DJ Hill? A good play on the special teams unit a couple series ago, and now getting an opportunity to get in the football game on the offensive side. Brady Hoke just trying to get his team sparked. Davis started well, but Northern figured him out. Here's Joey Lynch, the fleet-footed 
<laughs> Joey Lynch running for the first okay. down. This, you know what? There's something crazy going on here at Schumann Stadium yeah. today. There's been a you lot start, crazy going on you tonight. You start Nate Davis, who's the young guy that you think is going to run more than he passes, and I don't think he ran the ball once while he was in there. Then you put in the fifth-year senior, Joey Lynch, and what does he do? Scrambles for 15 yards. Lynch steps up and bobbled the football, lost it, recovered by the Huskies. Joey Lynch lost it. And I believe it's Ken West in there that got it. He had an 11-yard touchdown last week. And if it is West, he's had a couple of huge plays the last two weeks. Let's take a look, Rob. You know, it's just Joey Lynch was going to pump this ball and then maybe throw it to the outside. It's very wet down there. There's a lot of humidity. This one just slips out of his hands. And it turns into a quick turnover. And the last thing you want to do is give NIU a short field, and that's exactly what has happened. What a great play defensively. Johnny on the spot for the Huskies. That was Ken West. He has had back-to-back -back solid efforts on the defensive front. Wolf now losing two, nearly three, so that'll take him back down to 312 <laughs> rushing yards. 312. He only had 312 today? What a travesty. Rob, I'm telling you, in our three years, nothing compares to what we've seen in the Mid-American Conference before tonight, watching this young man run. I I've heard people mention Marshall Falk tonight. It does kind of remind you a little bit of the, the kind of player that Marshall Falk was in college. You just don't think that anybody can live up to the kind of hype that we've been hearing for the last few years about Garrett Wolf. All he did tonight was exceed that. Here is Horvath throwing Brandon Davis. He's becoming the go-to guy. Davis, the fleet-footed Brandon Davis, <laughs> down near the I'm 10. Not, listen, I'm not sure since Brandon Davis is about four years old, anybody's called him fleet-footed. Now, Brandon Davis had six career catches coming in. Tonight, he's got five for close to 60 yards receiving. Six foot four, 261. And when you ask his coaches about him, the first thing they say is, he's a great blocker. Yeah. You know, that's not fleet footed by definition. <laughs> but look at him, sideline, toe the in the footwork. line. Working off, he almost ran Perez over. He's like, quit with the blocking, get the heck out of my way. Clock running, 11.25 to go in this fourth quarter. Northern Illinois in control. Here goes Wolf head down, and he's dragged down. Here Wendell Brown came in, here. Booker in there, and Eric Keyes in there as well, I believe, on that tackle. I'm willing to bet this in the last series we'll see Garrett Wolf, especially if the Huskies are able to get this one in the end zone. Joe Novak told us earlier this week, he said, listen, in a perfect world, we're up by so many points early in the game that I can sit this kid down, so I think we're probably going to see this as, uh, you know, maybe maybe trying to get to that 325-yard mark and set a school record for Northern Illinois, but more than likely, these will be the last couple of carries we see from Garrett Wolf this game. Three touchdowns, 26 rushes, 318 yards. Enter the day, 46 yards in front of Adrian Peterson of Oklahoma. Flag on the play, and they'll back up the Huskies here. I think uh, the play clock ran off. Delay game. Uh, offense, number three, penalized, five yards, remain second down. Cardinals had 10 guys in the box in that one. They're just sitting there waiting for Garrett Wolf. This huge chunk of guys wearing red, they're all going to stay by the line of scrimmage. <laughs> I'm just, and then there's going to be, there's <laughs> going to be two guys out wide. Everybody else is going to be standing at the line of scrimmage looking for the little guy in the number one jersey. Now, the ball was at the seven yard line. If Wolf was to get it, that would have tied him for the all time single game rushing mark in Northern Illinois history. He gets the call here. Garrett Wolf, left side. He's down to the 15 yard line. And that'll bring up third down. <laughs> That's really interesting. Most of the time you hear coaches talk, well, if they decide to stack eight guys in the box, we will probably audible to a pass play because we know that they've only got a couple of guys out. 10 guys in the box. Simmons and the rest of the Cardinals are just sitting there waiting for Garrett Wolf. And I guess, you know, when a guy goes for 320 yards, chances are you think he might go try to go for a couple more. Two of his longest runs, in fact, the two longest in his career, I beg your pardon, two of the top three longest runs have come against Ball State, 84 yards, and tonight 75, McClure 
coming on the pressure there. Keys got Horvath as well. Portland Booker helped him out too. That's really the first time we can say tonight that Horvath has been in any kind of situation where he had to worry about the pressure. And this is a perfect combination while wow, Horvath almost drops that ball. It comes out there very excited at the defense. But Watson coming from both sides. Hey, I'll meet you at the quarterback. What do you say? <laughs> nice, nice job. Yeah, there is a fumble at the end there, but Horvath manages to fall on it. And now we get a long field goal attempt, trying to make this now a 26-point game. Yes, and Horvath is the holder for Chris Mendick. 37-yard attempt and a timeout has been called. 8.43 to go in this football game. It's all Huskies thus far. They've been in absolute control. We're back after this. Every Monday, catch the Bears press conference on Comcast Sportsnet. Hear what Lovey Smith has to say about the previous game and preview the upcoming weekend's matchup. Don't miss the Bears press conference every Monday at 5, only on Comcast Sportsnet. A lot of brilliant engineering went into making the Toyota Tacoma famously tough. Of course, a lot of brilliant engineering also went into making the interior really nice. No wonder Tacoma is America's best-selling compact truck. Now with 1.9% APR financing. Toyota, a great way to keep moving forward. Today, Cubs baseball plays on Comcast Sportsnet. The Northsiders look to finish the season strong when they battle the Rockies in high definition. Coverage starts with Cubs pregame live presented by Verizon Wireless. Cubs Rockies today at 1230 on Comcast Sportsnet. 8.43 left in this one. Ben Holden, Rob Otto, hope you've enjoyed this contest. If you're a Northern Illinois fan, you certainly have. And if you're a fan of watching very talented Running backs by the name of Garrett Wolf, you've enjoyed it. <laughs> Doug Free, number 62, is a very talented football player as well. 6'7. Beast. Doug Freak, they call him. Wolf on the season. To the second, 1,148 yards on the ground for Garrett Wolf to lead college football. That's after 14 games, right? No, that's after four and <laughs> nearly five. You're right, that's a career for some guys. It is. Some guys can start for three years yeah. and not get to 1,148 yards. Garrett Wolf has done it in under five games. And remember, he basically only played a half a game last week. Right, Nendick 37 yards away, and Chris Nendick, well, he missed the point after Rob broke the streak at 108, goes out, <laughs> makes a tackle, now he's banged through a couple of field goals for Northern <laughs> Illinois. 40 to 14, our score. We're back right after this. Stan, I hear the new CEO loves those new Rico Color MFPs. Yeah, the new fellow's the CFO, Chief Financial Officer. The money guy. Yeah. And that affordable Rico Color printing, he's love loving it. You know, Jerry, maybe you should be CEO. You think? Sure. Move your ideas forward with Rico Dependability. Want more than just the score? Then log on to ComcastSportsNet.com. Read analysis from Comcast Sportsnet's experts that you can't find anywhere else. Get up to the second news headlines. See the day's programming lineup. Check out talent bios and watch video clips featuring the latest info on your teams. Plus, sign up for Sports Extra and Sport Last email alerts that make you the first to know about breaking news. So what are you waiting for? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com right now. 40 to 14, Garrett Wolf on the bench. You gotta believe he's done for the night. <laughs> Number His one. Career rushing total now 4,384 yards. He has rushed for 320 tonight. Rob, our drive of the game is brought to you by your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. I'd love to have this guy to drive around the football field, Garrett Wolf. Yeah, no doubt about it. This is really kind of a, a one-play drive of the game. The first 12 yards were inconsequential. The last 53 by Garrett Wolf. I mean, seriously, you're talking quality players in Jason Simmons, 
and Eric Keyes, number 36 yes. and number seven. And he made them look silly on that play. I mean, those are plays that these guys are going to, they're going to wake up like sweating when they're 85 years old. They're going to wake up from a dead sleep <laughs> and they're going to see Garrett Wolf moving one way while they're moving another way. It's unbelievable how good this kid is. Wow, that was our drive of the game brought to you by your Metro Detroit Ford dealers as Terry Moss is out to the 28 yard line, 29 yard line. They'll spot him down. And you can visit thinkfordfirst.com for more on your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. Thinkfordfirst.com Think Ford mm. for locations nearest you. 8.29 to go. Now coming into this football game, Rob, Ball State was 1-0 in the MAC West. Yep. They had the Indiana game here, a game that they clearly should have and could have won. Now, more importantly, should have should won have. Yeah, than the could have. Yeah, that's that's a way to do it. 23-7 at half. 23-7 lead at half. The Lose Hoosiers, by a point. Hoosiers only had 77 total yards in the first half of that game. Nate Davis is back in at quarterback for Brady Hope's squad. And Lewis totes the pig there. He picks up close to eight yards, does McQuail Lewis. And he has rushed 10 times in the football game. And a Husky down on the turf, and that is there. Take take a seat, relax for a couple of minutes. That's the big the big nasty in the middle there, the nose tackle, <laughs> Brad Benson. Checking him out. And that defensive line has done a really good job. We've actually got another player down at about the 45-yard line with his, uh, his helmet off as well. So we had a couple of Huskies hurt on yep. this play. Benson off. You see him going off. Now they're out to 10 to... It's like somebody in the secondary back there. Tough I think to... it's Bradley Pruitt, the uh, sophomore cornerback, number 24. I believe okay. that's who's down on one knee. Quite a training staff at Northern Illinois. About nine people out there to tend to him. <laughs> that's the thing. They, they respond quickly. They had enough. They had enough people. Look at all these guys. There's like five of them out here, right. and that's after three or four of them had already tended to the previous player who was down. Good to know. That is. You're right, Rob. It was Pruitt, 24. Shaken up, so those two out of the game will have to come out for at least the one play. I think Pruitt just had the trainer check in his mouth to see if he lost a tooth. Chicklets? <laughs> I think we had some chiclet action going on there. Hockey on you now. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's where you just rub it into the ice and keep playing, right? Something like that, yeah. So Nate Davis from the shotgun. Handing off to Lewis, and Lewis, good cut back from McQuail Lewis, but he is wrapped up. Ryder, Mark Ryder got to him. He's been dinged up a little bit, and they moved him back to second on the depth chart, but he is a product of Providence Catholic High School, a football factory, as I like to say, in New Lenox, Illinois. <laughs> Very good football program. Lewis going out, Larry Bostic coming back in. Also Darius Hill coming back in to play some more tight end. You know, this game, Rob, for Northern Illinois, the start of a three-game road trip. And, yeah. and, and, and watching Joe Novak on his show yesterday on Friday, kind of a, the word unprecedented came up, not from Joe, but I believe on the show from, from the, uh, the reporter on the show. And that is unprecedented. They have to play three straight road games, conference, conference game. games. Conference road games. In a yeah. row. So this is certainly looking good for Northern Illinois as they are up by a score of 40 to 14 with seven minutes and change to go. And Rob, certainly hmm. no need to inform you. Who could our player of the game be? I'm guessing. I wonder. <laughs> Riddle me this, Batman. Tonight's play of the game is brought to you by <laughs> Bell Tire. We'll make you happy. You came in. That's a promise. Our Bell Tire player of the game. Wait, Garrett well, Wolf. He's what? making you happy. Garrett Wolf. For Northern Illinois, he certainly is. Wait a minute. I thought it was going to be uh, Marcus Perez, the fine wide receiver Horvath, for the Huskies. The Davis Horvath. twins. All right, well, listen, I guess we'll give it to Garrett Wolf. All he did today <laughs> was carry the ball 27 times for 320 yards. Also caught three passes for three yards. And he's a, uh, he's a, he's a snazzy dresser, don't you think? Yes. Quite a story he is becoming. Bostic makes the catch, and Larry Bostic able to scoot out of bounds with 7.02 left here in the fourth quarter. So Bostic, who came to Ball State, is a wide receiver, showing why. He came into the football game with the lead in that department on Ball State squad in terms of catches, and Brady Hope now, Rob. We were talking about it a minute ago before we had to shockingly tell you that our player of the game is Garrett Wolf. <laughs> I know, we but really did shock everybody with that. 
but the Indiana game, they go to Purdue, they score some points. It's a road game in the big against the Big Ten team. As Lewis breaks free, McQuail Lewis trying to get by Utschick, and the fine safety, Dustin Utschick, able to yank him down. But just to finish that thought, they go on the road to Purdue, they come home, they're sitting with a record of one and two, and then they, they do the same thing seemingly that they did against Indiana. They blow a game they should have had against North Dakota State here at home. But all that being said, the important part of the equation was they were 1-0 and in conference play. So all those other three games didn't mean a darn thing if they were able to protect home field and beat Northern Illinois today. And they had their chances. They moved the ball really well in the first half. But I really think that lack of running game, and obviously they're making up for it now, but this is more the Huskies allowing them to run the ball. They're, they're covering everything deep, which is leaving a lot of the stuff underneath. They're gonna play nickel and dime the rest of the way just to make sure there's not a lot of long passes. Let the Cardinals run the ball. Let them do what they need to do as long as the, the time keeps clicking off the clock. But I mean, still, Brady Hoke has to look at this as he still has the opportunity to win his division or at the very least get his team to the point where they they could be bowl eligible. I mean, there's upwards of four bowl possibilities for the Mid-American Conference this year. And I don't think there's any reason to think that Ball State and Brady Hoke can't be one of those four teams, but they've got to find a way to balance out their offense when it counts. All of these empty yards right now are not going to mean a thing. Yep. Brady Hoke has got to decide whether it's going to be Quayle Lewis, whether it's going to be Larry Bostic. Hold He's got to find his number one running back offense. and try to ride Ten that horse. From the previous spot. William Algie. We haven't down. seen Mr. Algie in a while. And the penalty will back up Brady Hoke and Ball State. Now, the Cardinals, Rob, have just two home games remaining. Yeah. And we That's will the see problem. them against Western Michigan here. It'll be homecoming day on October the 21st. And they have another home game also in November against Kent State. So that's all the they've got the weather's going to be like for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a hurricane and a blizzard all in one here. And no, it'll be 80 degrees and sunny. Who are we kidding? Unbelievable. Who knows? Five and a half to go in this football game. Davis pump fakes. Now he'll fire. He'll sling nice. one down there. Caught Moss. Terry Moss. Touchdown for Ball State. 27 left. What a perfect pass. Very nice. I mean, that, that ball had to sneak in between two separate Huskies and a great job getting it down there and keeping his concentration is Terry Moss. But watch this, all the time he needs beautiful pump fake. And then look at the two defenders right there. The two defenders, he gets the ball right in the middle, lays it in there, a beautiful spiral. Nice job. Good job. See, Terry Moss kind of launched himself into the end zone because it looked like he was going to go down to one knee at about the three-yard line. Jackson on, point after is good. And I'll tell you what, Terry Moss, he certainly likes playing against this Northern Illinois team. Whatever it's worth, a touchdown last year, 18 yards. And he had a 94-yard kick return back in 2004. In fact, his first career touchdown came against Joe Novak, the Northern Illinois Huskies, who are on their way, barring a miracle at this point. 19-point lead, but stranger things have happened, Rob. We've been around <laughs> to see this Ball State team last year when they came back from 22 down against Eastern Michigan. If you'd like to see this contest once again, it re-airs Monday, October the 8th, 8 Eastern. That's Northern Illinois and these Ball State Cardinals right here on Comcast Local. So, again. Didn't, uh, didn't no say about a 17 point deficit last Saturday night with about six minutes to go in the game. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does. That, that probably would never happen, especially now, against a Big Ten opponent. Northern's got the hands team out there. <laughs> Again, Brady Hoke's team, 22 down. But I, I say I use the word miracle only because the way that Northern has played in the second half, this game was 14 apiece at halftime. And they That's have just really exploded. amazing to think of that. Yeah, so. These teams were tied at the half. And Ball State just scored a touchdown to get it down to a 19-point game. Right. 5.27 to go. They are set. Jackson, the onside kick. And we'll have to wait for Jackson to put this into play. Both teams got the hands people out there up in the air. And Northern has it. Lost it. Lost it. Ball State's, Ball State's got it. Off. They recover. 
23 to go. 19-point game. That'll bring Nate Davis and the offense back onto the field. Here's a look. The funny thing is, is I thought they probably, Jackson probably kicked this ball a little bit too deep, and one of the Huskies was right up there to grab it. Uh, Andy Dickbenner gets his hands on this ball, but it just bounces off. He's a punter if that's Dickbenner. I think that, I really think that's number 18, isn't it? Or was it Dan Nicholson, the, you know, the sophomore backup quarterback? Whoever it was, had their hands on the ball, was more worried about getting hit than holding on the ball, and because of that, Cardinals have it back. Well, Euless Taylor recovered the onside kick. Davis, he'll go to work, and he's going after it downfield. Bostic there, and back on the coverage, defending number 12, Adriel Hansbro. Haven't said his name much tonight. He's back there on the coverage on Larry Bostic. Yeah, Larry Bostic gets away with a bit of a push off before trying to catch this one. So it's probably a, uh, a good thing for the uh, Husky fans out there that Bostic didn't come down with that one because I think he got, got away with a bit of a penalty. You know, Davis throws such a good ball and rather unique when you look. He's got both hands. He's got gloves on. A lot of guys, you know, Brady wears the one glove, but he leaves the other one open. But Davis likes the... The two-glove look over the middle. It's caught by Johnson. Lewis Johnson down near the 40 and is wiped out and drilled there. And down he goes. McCarthy in on the play. Flag back behind it. From the back judge, we've got a big flag coming in from the from the back judge. It seems a little odd. Odd place, which uh, makes me think that maybe we had a holding away from the ball by one of the wide receivers downfield. William Algy talking things over and we'll get his call. So a low block and obviously must have come from somewhere downfield because that flag came out from the, uh, the back judge. Illegal block below the waist. Offense number 19 penalized 15 yards from the end of the run. Wow, that says all you need to know right there. That look on Brady Hope's face. And the last thing he needed was uh, Larry Bostic to throw a low blow. I mean, this has just been, it's been one of those days. Everything has gone right for Northern Illinois here in the second half. But the only thing you can say against them was they botched the onside kick. And missed a point after. Yep. But I'm not going to get technical. This is caught by <laughs> Hill over the middle. 45 down to the 42. And he has got the first down. So Davis comes through. They convert inside of five minutes to go. They picked up 14 on that pass and catch and run by B.J. Hill. Now again, I know there might be a lot of Cardinal fans out there watching. How come they weren't doing this the whole game? Well. It's a very soft defensive front by the Huskies right now. They don't care about anything that's under about 15 yards. Yep. They're playing nickel and dime. We've got five, six, seven DBs out there. They're rushing three or four on the defensive line. They will allow the Cardinals to get some of this soft yardage in between the 20s, and then they'll start to tighten up once they get inside the red zone. But you look, we just got the four down linemen there, and there's seven DBs in the game between the linebackers and the defensive backs just making sure they keep every Cardinal in front of them so it's not a long pass. That's why the offense is clicking so well right now for Brady Hope. Now, was that movement on Ball State or did Northern jump off sides? That's I'm the going to say now. it's on Ball State just because, ev just because everything else has gone right for the Huskies so far in this game for the most part. Brady disagrees with me. 440 to go in the football game and William Algy will break free and give us the call. Outside. Defense, the number 53, penalized five yards. So that will push him forward out. five more yards. I don't think that this, you know what's really funny? These are the drives that Joe Novak is going to focus on when he yes. gets his, when he gets yes, his he team is. together. You know, later, later in the week when they look at this film, it's going to be all of these yardage, all of this yardage that the Cardinals got that Joe Novak is going to, uh, to focus on trying to fire up his defense in the next week. Lewis Johnson with that catch, the hometown product from Central right here in Muncie. And Lewis now with... Five yard pick up there. Davis looking and firing. He's got Moss and he overthrows him in the corner of the end zone. Second down and 10 from the 26. Hey, Davis, the play. 
Now things are gonna get a lot tougher for Nate Davis and the Cardinals down here because there's not the huge expanse of field in front of them. The defense can play more of a, a base defense now rather than just kind of playing the prevent. And it's gonna to be tougher for Nate Davis to find yards here against these Huskies. Offense of Northern Illinois. They're huddled up on the sideline. Nate Davis in the football game tonight. 25 of 35, Rob, for 282 yards and three scores. And I'm not exactly sure what's the delay on the field, but the officials say, all right, let's play, boys. And the whistle goes. Dumped off to Bostic. Can't get much on the play, maybe two, maybe three at the most. And the clock continues to run here against Ball State. Time is their enemy. They trail by 19. But again, they came back from 22 down last year, last November at Eastern Michigan. So I suppose anything's possible. There's yeah, no question the, that's you the know, case. With, with this much time uh, left on the clock, it's going to be pretty tough. You're talking at least three scores from this point right here. And now it's fourth down. Hill couldn't make the catch as good as Darius Hill has been tonight. He couldn't make that one. He's got eight for 99 and a touchdown. And it's fourth down and seven. Yeah, you think down by 19, basically what you're looking at is just to tie this game, two touchdowns, two two-point conversions, and a field goal. And more than likely, you've got to mix in a couple of recovered onside kicks in the middle there just to even have the opportunity to tie this football game. Darius Hill went out. Now he's back in. Steinhaus checked out of the game. Keep your eyes on 88. Six foot six. List him as a tight end. Thank you, Rob. But he plays like a wide receiver. Nobody open. Good job of the secondary into the end zone. There it is. There he touchdown. Is. Darius Hill with another touchdown catch. They lost him in the end zone. That's two for Darius. And another 100-yard receiving night, 40 to 27. Now, the interesting thing here is they're not going for two. Why not try to get this to 11 points so that you can get it to a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal to tie this game? It's almost like uh, Brady Hoke is just realizes how far he's down there. Maybe he's not even trying to pay attention to his little plastic card right now. Good snap, the hold, the kick, perfect. Well, maybe he just figures he's going to score a couple of touchdowns and the extra points won't bother. That may be an option, too. <laughs> first things first, Rob. They will, as you said, have to get one of those two onside kicks. Jackson, well, they executed it last time as the Huskies could not get a hold of the football each team with two timeouts. But if Northern Illinois can get a first down, you gotta figure this game's over if they get the ball. Here's the ISO on Darius Hill. And you know what? Darius Hill just ends up getting left alone because of all the time that Nate Davis had. Just absolutely, and that's a great, that's a great vision for a young wide receiver or a tight end to see. You finish your pattern, but if your quarterback is still in trouble, just keep running. Keep moving to the open space. Make sure you give him the option to hit you as a target. Well, Joe Novak saying, all right, I need the hands team out there. And I need them to get this football so we can get out of town with a victory and move to two and one in the Mid-American Conference in the West Division and move to three and two overall. Perez, he is back at the 29 yard line is Perez. It's gonna be one of those long blooper of an onside kick. Jackson's got it teed up. Can Ball State do it again? Can they get a second straight onside kick? Good one up in the air. And I believe Britt Davis came down. There's a penalty flag. And Davis indeed did come down with it. Britt Davis, who's been big on the receiving end tonight, five for 115. We'll check the flag. Got any idea on what that might be? None, none of the uh, guys touched the ball before. Okay, so it was uh, offsides, actually, on Ball State. So. The Huskies will hold on to this ball and decline it. try to run the clock as much as they can. Listen, Brady, you can talk to him all you want. He's not changing the call. <laughs> Here's the call from... Illegal block. Elgin. Prior to the ball going 10 yards, that is the clock northern... So there you go, 342 to go and 320 yards for Garrett Wolf. 27 rushes and Garrett Wolf 
is in that I'm huddle. Shocked for the Northern Illinois I'm Huskies. Shocked. He's the little guy right here. <laughs> he's the one. Who's, it was that he's, him. He's the one whose okay. helmet doesn't quite reach up to the height of the other guy's helmets. Now Wolf against Eastern Michigan set the school rushing record, single game of 325 yards. And he is closing in on that 321 after this carry. And Rob, don't I'm, think, listen, don't think all these Cardinals right here don't know that. Don't know that he's out there, that he's got 320 yards, and that he's going for some sort of record. And they are going to tee off on Garrett Wolf. I really hope this does not come back to bite Joe Novak in the uh, in the hind quarters. Because really, this kid should be sitting down. I yep. understand going, and you want to, and, and you know what? I guarantee Garrett's in there saying, I want to do it for my line. That's who I want to do it for. If it was just for me, I wouldn't do it. But my line works so hard, I want to try to break the record for those guys. But Joe Novak has got to think about the rest of the season and the possibility of a MAC championship. And so it's, it's a, this is a tough decision. This is one of those decisions. This is why Joe Novak is earning his paycheck for this game because really, and he knows it, he should take his starters out of this game right now, especially his bread and butter, Garrett Wolf. But on the other side, you're a fan. You want records. I mean, you, you, you want to see the guy do something that nobody else in school history has ever been able to do. And so you say, you know what? Let's give him one more crack at it. 3.14 to go. He picked up two on that last carry did Wolf. He's at 322 yards. He's seven Ten yards guys deep. in the box for the Cardinals. And they fake to him. Horvath will throw, and it's into the bench. And that will bring up a third down and eight. So using uh, Garrett Wolf as the decoy there. Try and catch the Cardinals off balance. Now you just hand it to Garrett Wolf, let him get whatever yards he gets, and just keep that clock rolling. Well, Ball State does have one timeout left. That is it. And on third down tonight, the Huskies, well, they're hitting 700. Wow. Wolf is hit 322. Here he goes. Garrett Wolf to the outside. Look out. Here he goes. Another record for Wolf. There is a flag on the play if it stands. If it stands, it would be his fourth stand. touchdown of the night. It's coming back. Horvath is absolutely sick right now. Uh, it's holding yep. on the Huskies, and that run is coming back. Oh, look at Novak. Yep, 2.59 to go. He makes that it would have been a 45 yard run. Number 97. Offense. Penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, third down. It's the second touchdown of 45 Called yards back. or more. Call back in this game. He could have uh, well he, over he'd 400. He'd be over 400 yards easy with those couple of runs added on. So third and 12. They're still gonna, they're still gonna run Garrett Wilk. That's what they're going to do. Exactly. 322. Ball is at the 49-yard line. Wolf gets it right up the middle. Garrett Wolf still on his feet. Keys got him. He is Jeez, very Keys close. Keys almost pulls him to the first down. And Rob, order. looking at the spot right across from where they're I'm gonna, seeing they're it. They're going to measure this. I think he's got it. Whatever the case may be, Garrett Wolf has just set a new single-game rushing record for Northern Illinois, and he has broken his old record that was 325 yards. I think they're gonna bring the chains out on this And one. right now, unofficially, I will not give you his yardage because I don't have that in front of me. 339 unofficially right now for Garrett Wolf. And Rob, you're right, here come the sticks. What do you think? I think there's gonna be a first down. I think they're gonna hand the ball to Garrett Wolf again. I think you're right, <laughs> That's I agree. What I think is gonna happen. Based on that spot, I think they're gonna have it by the nose it's, of the it's football. It's really, really close. It might be a couple of links one way or the other. Oh, they no, didn't get it's it. Just short. They're short by that much. They're good. Look at look at the offensive line. Give me a shot at the offensive lineman at the 50-yard line. They're all pointing their arms. Let's go. Let's go. All these big meaty guys are all like, we're going for it. We're going for it. This guy's six foot seven. I if he yells at me and says, we're going for it, I don't know that I could disagree with him. 
Well, he's rushed for 339 on 30 carries, so you got to figure he's got to be able to get uh, less than yeah. a foot. I mean, if these guys can't just push forward and get you a couple of inches. Well, he didn't even get Horvath it. Horvath, and he got drilled, but he got the first down. Allen tattooed him. That's all you need from your offensive line. That's but all you need. That is a first down for Horvath, the young man from Naperville, Illinois. And here's a look, Rob. Watch, actually, he doesn't get it on the initial push. Nice job by the linebackers to come up in and stop him. But Horvath has the presence of mind not to go down to a knee, to push around to the outside, and that's a first down. And, hmm, what do you think the Huskies might call on this play, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Clock is running. <laughs> Garrett Wolf. Who'd have seen that one and coming? And he gets a block. Wolf down inside the 25, taken down from behind by Wendell Brown at the 19-yard line. The numbers continue to grow, and Wolf slow to get up, trying to get the turf out of the face mask there. And he is coming out of the game right now. Anderson is coming in. Garrett Wolf. And the NIU faithful who are still here at uh, Schumann Stadium, standing ovation for that young man. Well, they should. Yeah, well, 353 yards on the ground for the nation's leading rusher. Is he a Heisman Trophy candidate? <laughs> you bet he is. <laughs> I, I don't care what conference he's listen, in. It's hard, it's hard to disagree with that. And again, he's done it against some of the best competition. He did it against Ohio State did it against Northwestern. Last year, he did it against Michigan. And Rob, with his performance tonight, Wolf, the fifth best rushing performance single game-wise in the history of the Mid-American Conference. He slides into fifth place, moving past George Swarn of Miami, who did it in 85. He's just three yards back of Brian Pruitt from Central Michigan, did it in 1994. Garrett Wolf, 31 carries, 353 yards, and three scores. And what easily, Rob, now with 353 and the two call back, easily could have been a 500 yard night. Entirely possible. With five touchdowns. Entirely this possible. This is mind boggling. For that young man. And it's so funny. You talked to, uh, we talked to Joe Novak earlier here this week. And he said, you know, when I got this kid and I saw how tiny he was, I'm thinking, we better not give him more than 10 or 12 touches a game because I don't think he can handle it. <laughs> how about. 31 touches, coach. And let's add in three catches while you're at it. 34 touches for this kid that Joe Novak, when he first saw him, said, now nah, there's no way he can handle the ball more than 10 or 12 times a game. His body just can't put up with it. Part by your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. Visit thinkfordfirst.com for locations near you. And by Bell Tire, we'll make you happy you came in. That's a promise. Anderson with the handoff and the Huskies trying to chew up this time, minute and a half to go. Ball State is out of timeout, so Northern Illinois on the brink of moving to three and two on the season. Penalty flag on the play and some extracurricular with the big boys, the big uglies up front. Apparently our uh, referee staff just decided they hadn't been here long enough at Human Stadium, so why don't we stop the clock a couple of more times? Joe Novak. Just playing with you guys, just playing with you. He has had very good success against these Ball State Cardinals. Because, you know. Aside from last year. Last thing you want, I like ben them trying to keep Personal control. Personal foul, offense, number 21. And lies 15 yards. It'll be third down. Last thing you want is something crazy to happen and somebody to get hurt because of some pushing somebody around late in this game. So I absolutely understand why they're doing it. I'm just tired and bitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would you be that? We had a 53 minute delay. The game was suspended. But you know what, Rob? I don't know about you, but for me personally, whether it's been as a play-by-play -play mm -hmm. announcer, as a reporter in my days in Lansing and Detroit. Just, just as a fan, I have, in the stands. I have yeah. never seen a single game performance as good as the one I saw. And we had the honor and pleasure of calling tonight from one Garrett Wolf. I, I'm honestly, I'm being 100% yeah, no, honest. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, partner. I mean, it's, uh, it's been, I mean, this is really an unbelievable sight we were allowed to watch today. 
And they keep it on the ground, and it'll bring up fourth down. And there is, well, you call him Mr. Wolf for sure. Mm -hmm. 31 rushes, 353, 11 to a pop. Three touchdowns with a 75-yard run in there as well. And that's 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 video game-like, Rob. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that really, really is. is. That's like 1987 Tecmo Bowl right there. I mean, that's... <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. But that's, I mean, it's, right. not, it's not even like a Madden or an EA NCAA. I mean, that's, that's unreal. You said in Mr. Wolf, that's all you have to say. That is incredible. Unbelievable, that kid. Hand off. And, and you know prime what? The carry. Not yeah, a right. nicer kid to talk to either. No, you're right. I mean, on top of everything else, he's a great player. He's a good kid. I love talking about how good he is because... Yeah. Off the field, he's probably a better person than he is a football player, and that's saying an awful lot. Yeah, and Joe Novak just uh, raves about him, just talks about his attitude, had all the yards, 285 total yards against Ohio State, and he said there wasn't a more disappointed guy on our team. Not that other guys weren't disappointed. And how's that for an exclamation <laughs> point? <It> just <laughs> end on a defensive play. That's, that's almost just the last thing we needed for this one. But to finish that thought, he said Garrett Wolf is more disappointed than anybody. Tonight, Northern Illinois comes to town. The Huskies, well, their bark was large, especially from their star tailback, who is now a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. I don't care what you say. Garrett Wolf is the most amazing player I've ever had the opportunity to see in person. 31 carries, 353 yards, and three touchdowns. 40 to 28 is our final. Rob Otto, a final thought from you. I'm guessing where it will be headed. I'm quite sure well, of that. Well, I want to start with Joe Novak, first of all, because this team really could have gotten down after losing at home to Ohio in the MAC opener, but now they come on the road. They get two more road games. Joe Novak has done a great job of keeping these guys there. But the Huskies are now right back where a lot of us thought they would be earlier in the season, the opportunity of getting to the MAC Championship. All right, for my broadcast partner, Rob Otto, my name is Ben Holden and all of our crew, we appreciate you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the Garrett Wolf Show tonight as Northern takes care of Ball State. Good night for Muncie. Shining is finding comfort when it's needed most. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, we'll stand with you to simplify and shed light on your health care. Because along the way you realize comfort isn't always physical. Sometimes it's a state of mind. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, shining through. So you were out sick yesterday? Yeah, I had a little throat thing. Watching Blue's Clues, why aren't you? I heard the mail time song like eight times. The Nick shows your kids are talking about. Ready to watch anytime. On demand with Comcast Digital Cable. It's Comcasting. VHicks.com helps people find the car they want at a dealer near them. How do we improve that user experience? Every time you click on a link, new car smell comes out of your computer. <laughs> You smell that? That's new. And your idea? VHix TV. With helpful video buying guides that make online shopping more fun. Helpful video buying guides. Now at VHix.com. Roadmap to the automotive world. Chicago Tribune Live, presented by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers, weekdays at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. I think I would be here if I had I taken 35 pills. Coming up on Pro Football Now, on and off the field, T.O. steals the headlines, and that can't sit too well with the man calling the shots in Big D. When I find out what the hell is going on, you will know. Until then, I'm not getting interrogated for no reason. Controversy continues in the NFC East, where a mutiny could be brewing in the Big Apple. We got outplayed and outcoached. Write that one down. The reigning MVP has some surprising news, while a former MVP may be singing the blues in New England. We'll sort it all out on Pro Football Now.
No, I'm not depressed by it. And, uh, you know, I think I'm very happy to be here. Hi, and welcome to week four of Pro Football Now here on Comcast Sportsnet. I'm Ron Burke. You know, the great thing about sports is every day is different. Every day is unpredictable. And along those very lines, Terrell Owens went from the sidelines to lead story this week during a bizarre week in which uh, his desire to live was even called into question. And with that as a backdrop and a setup, I introduce now our analysts, beginning with me in Philadelphia. As always, my left-hand man, Brian Baldinger, and I'll say briefly, here we go again. We'll get more into this in a minute, Baldy. Well, it's, it's Groundhog Day. I mean, it's, just, it's a story that, that won't end. It won't die. And um, I guess everybody's fascinated. Parcells getting up from a press conference and walking out is, is part of the story. And so there's just so many contributors, and um, this phenomenon just keeps uh, enduring. And I've never seen, no, no, nothing we've ever seen in our time has seen a, a lifespan like this. And in Washington, D.C., joining us as always, Doc Walter. Uh, Doc Walker, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's like the real-life NFL version, Doc, with, uh, with Terrell Owens. It really is. It's ironic. I was watching Hugh Hefner celebrate his 80th birthday <laughs> over in France, and, you know, he was all with his, with his three associates. <laughs> Just trying, trying to get a break from, just trying to get a break from football, Doc? Well, I just, really was. Yeah. I was really <laughs> trying to rid myself of football for just an evening to dive back into it, getting ready for for our show, and the next morning is T.O. He's a Hollywood-like. It's like if Paris Hilton stubs her toe, it's news. If T.O.'s constipated at this point, you know, it's breaking news. <laughs> you know, I think you could say many people in the public are constipated because uh, it has dominated the headlines uh, for over a year now. Just Not just, not just football-related issues, uh, on-field issues in this case. With T.O., so much of it has been what's happened when he is off the field. And with that in mind, here's what Terrell Owens said to represent himself Wednesday after a really a busy day of speculation poured in about what really happened to him Tuesday night in Dallas. <laughs> there was no suicide attempt. I think um, I went home yesterday um, after I left the facility and uh, I, I took a couple pain pills and then I had some treatment. I had a physician over treating my hand and uh, I think after that I was just kind of groggy a little bit and I kind of took some extra pills with my supplements. And the 911, the 911 call with, uh, with Kim, you know, she made because there were some pills that I had separated and the bottle was on the table and it was empty. Uh, the rest of the pills were in a drawer. I'm not depressed by any means. Uh, you know, I think I, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, you know, my thing is uh, I've come here to help this team, you know, get on a roll, get on the track of getting into the playoffs and, and, and winning some ball games. So Terrell Owens says, no, he was not attempting to commit suicide. You heard his explanation for what took place and what led to a 911 call, overnight hospitalization. And, Baldy, you played, Doc played. Great thing about having you guys on this show. You have such a wealth of information for us. So I ask you, you've taken pain pills mm -hmm. during your NFL career. How they affect you? I mean, just depending on the prescription and, and what you take in an empty stomach. I mean, all the different factors that can, they can go into it. I mean, you can be, just like he said, you can be groggy, you can be dizzy, you can be completely out of it. Mm -hmm. You can be zoned out. Uh, so all those, all those reactions are, are all there. And if you've never had that happen before, uh, you can get scared. You can make, probably make that call. Now, there's a lot of amateur psychiatrists out there today, you know, have tuned into a few of them. I don't want to be <laughs> one of those people. So I, I, I can't comment anymore except that those are some of the reactions that can happen to something like that. This obviously is a, an extreme reaction because the word suicide is brought into the discussion. Do you have any experience, personal or otherwise, maybe with a teammate, where there was sort of an extreme reaction to pain pills? Yes, I mean, I've seen it happen even off the field. I mean, it, it, that's not a, a rare occurrence. What's the rare occurrence is that suicide mm -hmm. is mentioned. Yeah. Um, other than that, and the fact that we bought into it because of T.O.'s Bizarre behavior. I mean, if, if, if we had Baldy on the suicide watch, people would go, are you yeah, kidding me? That's right. <laughs> Baldy would not. He wouldn't give up an opportunity to do a football game. Are you out of your mind? You don't have time to be yeah. depressed. Trying to get to the next gig. Yeah, right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Well, we're junkies. Yeah. But here's a guy 
who <laughs> and I, again, I, I'm, it's out of my field. If it's not X's and O's, I'm not a shrink. Uh, I need one. So when I look at this thing, I feel sorry for him. Part of me says, hey, man, get some clinical help. You know, because maybe this is something bigger than that. Maybe this is something at the tip of the iceberg. Don't tell me he was clamoring for attention. If you think he needed this soapbox opera today, then he is sick. All right, we have reaction uh, from around the NFL, beginning with Hugh Douglas, who, uh, as a former Eagles player last year, had a much publicized blow up altercation, physical altercation with Terrell Owens at the Eagles headquarters. Here's what Hugh Douglas said the day Terrell Owens was released from the hospital. When I saw the press conference, I saw something a little different. I, I, I got to be honest, I, there's something there. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens because we don't know. We don't know the whole story yet. I played with him for, for three years. I lived with the guy, you know, and, uh, you know, I know him being, being a great person, you know. You know he's a really good guy, really good, good family man, you know. But, uh, like I said, it's very shocking. As uh, is always the case, there's there's a lot more to a story than, than uh, you know, rumors and speculation. And so uh, that was my first take was, first of all, I was concerned about him uh, as a friend and as a teammate. And then, uh, second of all, I wanted to wanted to know what actually happened, but um, and I don't know the answer to that yet, but I'm just glad to see he was here today. Well, T.L. certainly didn't look like a guy who had taken uh, 35 pills, as had been alleged. He said prior to his uh, press conference the other day that he even did some uh, tossing with Drew Bledsoe before he came in to meet uh, the press. In fact, Bill Parcells had said the day before, Owens, with the broken finger from the previous week, uh, was in line to perhaps practice on Wednesday. And Terrell Owens said, uh, coming out of the press conference right at the end there, that he, he would love to play Sunday. He, he looked like a guy who was okay in, in a physical sense, just doing the little eye test there. And he's now talking about playing Sunday. Well, if I was a wide receiver and I had a chance to play against Tennessee, I'd want to play. With a broken finger, without. I mean, I, I'd get... I'd get my stats up. I'd get healthy. Man, that secondary is just begging for a wide receiver like T.O. to go against him. And, and then if you look down the road, maybe just take a peek here. Uh -huh. It just amplifies his return yeah, to Philadelphia. Yeah, what's after that? Oh, yeah. There you it go. It just bro. amplifies everything. So the story just stays current. It stays newsworthy. And it just, it, you know, it, it's just the... It's the helium balloon that is, there's no leak. He is, fa he is a fascinating individual with Terrell Owens. It is always something. That's certainly no news flash, but it's amazing. I've never seen anybody like this guy in professional sports, this kind of magnet where the attention is always coming his way, even when he's not on the field, even when he's not in season. Still to come here on Pro Football Now, more controversy this time from on the field. Jeremy Shockey can't stop talking, and his coach is in the crosshairs once again. Oh, boy. And has Tom Brady lost too many weapons in New England finally? That and more coming up, but first, as we break a look at the schedule for week four in the league. Golfers, play more and get more with the Chicago District Golf Association. The CDGA is for everyone who plays the game. For more than 90 years, the CDGA has promoted amateur golf for beginners, juniors, men, women, families, seniors, and everyday champions. We service the game and over 90,000 members. Located at Midwest Golf House, the CDGA is at the center of amateur golf in the Midwest. If you're passionate about golf, the CDGA has what you want. Upgrade your basic membership to a CDGA Platinum membership to receive special green fees and more. Every night at 6.30, 10, and midnight, there's only one show devoted to the true Chicago sports fan. Sports Night on Comcast Sportsnet. If you love Chicago sports, then this is your nightly destination for all that's happening. No other show goes as in-depth on your teams with highlights, interviews, analysis, and more time on the stories you care about. Chicago, this is your nightly sports news. Sports Night, every night at 6.30, 10, and midnight, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Comcast Sportsnet's action Pack weekend continues today at 12.30 as the Cubs host the Rockies. At 10.30, get a complete recap of the Bears Seahawks showdown on U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. It's an action Pack weekend only on Comcast Sportsnet. 
And I thought he played hard today. I thought we never gave up. It's just we got outplayed and outcoached. Write that one down. Give a f we can play. We got outplayed. You know, there's no 12th man. There's no f excuses. We lost the game. Basically, it. We get a bye week to get this get this thing going. Keep people healthy and uh, get back on the field. Hopefully, uh, you know, this will wake us up. And um, we just keep it and getting better. I know this game didn't look like we got better, but hopefully we learned something about it. Jeremy Shockey and the Giants are one and two as we welcome you back to pro football now. And there's a team that's headed into a bye week. And you can say at this point, a much needed bye week. You know, third, third week bye weeks, so or in this case, fourth week bye weeks aren't something that's real popular among fans to be sure but I think the Giants will take it in this case because of where they are they've given up uh, so far they've given up 92 points in three games as Shockey says the outplay part okay people accept that but when you say out coach you're going into territory you should not tread as a player well you're right I mean really what they need there is they need some electricians tape and just tape it all shut because for a team that has never done anything they won the division last year and then got embarrassed in the playoffs. I, they, they all love to talk. And I know it's New York, it's the media capital and everything. But really, I look at this group and I'm saying to myself, they were losing 35 to nothing in this game. This wasn't a whipping. It was 35 to nothing. I mean, you've got to work hard to lose 35 to nothing in any game against any opponent in this league. So, so it, that's, that's more than coaching. That's, that's effort. That's uh, execution. That's... That's not, you know, traveling out to Seattle ready to play. That, that's a lot of other wrong things. All right, so as Jeremy Shockey logged his complaint uh, in the direction of the head coach, Tom Coughlin, here's what Coughlin, remember last year, Coughlin was also criticized by a Tiki Barber who said they were outcoached in that playoff game, that shutout loss to the Carolina Panthers. Here's what Coughlin had to say in response to Shockey's criticism this past week. I'm concerned because, you know, there, there's nothing to be gained by pointing fingers. All right, if you're truly a team and you're in it together, that's what you win and lose together, okay? We don't make a point of, po of pointing the finger at, at anyone. Uh, when we lose, I lose. I take the responsibility for the loss. That's my job. Everything else is just should be, uh, if there is something that needs to be said, my door's always open. Come on in, sit down, and talk to me. I'll be glad to talk to you about it. All right, this is uh, really the, the, the sad truth for the Giants, a team that uh, was expected to and still could uh, compete in the NFC East and even in the entire NFC. Only two sacks this season. That ranks last in the NFL. This is a team with Strahan, Yerman Yora, brought in Arrington, has Pierce at linebacker. Uh, the Giants allowing better than 30 points a game. They rank 30th in the league in total first downs. They are 31st in the 32-team league in third down efficiency, a shade under 59%. They have been horrible. The bye week comes at a good time before they take on the Redskins in week five. And, uh, and Baldy, when you look at where the Giants are now versus where they were expected to be psychologically, does that play on a team that still has some veteran leadership and, and should be able to handle tough situations? Well, I mean, they're one and two. That's the reality is one and two. And so really it comes down to can you fix what's broken? And really the problem is the, why they have only two sacks is they've got no pass rush in the middle. I mean, William Joseph, and Fred Robbins are nice players against the run. They're not pass rushers. So everybody double teams Humanor and Strahan or triple team Strahan. Uh, people love to see LeVar Arrington trying to cover in the passing game because he's lost. And Sam Madison looks scared. And, hmm. I mean, he was backing up against Dante Stallworth like he'd never seen speed come at him before. The Eagles were surprised at that. And so teams are attacking those weaknesses right now. Doc, how are the Giants, if they are to fix it, how are they going to fix it? I mean, does a bye week and an extra time to prep, presumably, uh, turn around a team that, that has some talent on it, but uh, as, as Baldy pointed out, has some key players that, that it's counting on to play big roles who so far have been invisible? Whenever in football, the mouthpiece of your team, they play wide receiver and not quarterback or offensive line, and that's the representative of your team, you're up, a paddle, up that creek with an odor with no paddle. The quarterback is too young to take charge. Tiki Barber may not be in his personality. Mm -hmm. I know he's well-respected. But where does the leadership come from? You know, you always got to hear, it's either Plaxico, Burris, who made a big play against Philadelphia, but would have to be considered inconsistent at best. Shockey, terrific talent. But we've seen this act before. And people in New York, when I read the back pages, where was he in the OTAs? He was on the beach. <laughs> and so if you're that 
concerned about being good, then maybe it might have been good for you and your quarterback to develop some type of relationship. The bottom line is that they're overrated. And they can turn it around. But right now, blah, 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 blah. And let's see what happens. Same old New York. Yeah, it looked like they're still on the beach. 98-pound weaklings being kicked in the face with sand. You talk about, Doc, quarterback receiver relationship that brings us to the Patriots who are two and one which on paper looks great but it's a shaky two and one because you look at Tom Brady and, and we've looked in past years how they've lost the offensive coordinator defensive coordinator player here player there Patton's gone Gibbons is gone Branch is now gone has this now caught up to Brady who according to reports in in New England is carrying himself with a different demeanor now the body language they say is telling them something about where this guy's mind well they didn't play well <laughs> last week you know and so you start looking and did Tom Brady look happy did he look competitive Competitive? Did he look fired up? Not really. Uh, I think he is a little shocked. The, the cupboard has been, has uh, has left town, and so Chad Jack's not there last week. Uh, you know, if you're asking a quarterback to lean on his running backs and his tight ends to make the plays down the field that at one time guys like Deion Branch and David Givens and David Patton made, then I think that's a, that's a large stretch to ask uh, a Pro Bowl and MVP quarterback to do. Yeah. Uh, Doc, what's your read on what the uh, Patriots are going through right now with Tom Brady in particular? Well, they're going through denial and betrayal because when a quarterback takes a little bit less in the hopes that he can keep the pieces of his puzzle intact, and then somebody lied. Plain and simple. If, if the Patriot fans, who are great fans, pay 50 bucks to park during the preseason, and they can't sign a wide out. They lose the best kicker in football. <laughs> I mean, come on. And so what happens is that, you know, somebody lied. I was critical of Peyton Manning. He took all the money and let three pro bowlers. There's a kid in, in, in Jacksonville, a kid in Washington. Pro bowlers gone from a defense that was like Swiss cheese. But he got paid. Now the edge is gone. And they're going to find out. It doesn't work. you got to put your money where your mouth is. Well, Brady did it, and they betrayed him. You know, this week the uh, Patriots will take on the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, and we've seen the Patriots in past years uh, as they ascended up the ladder. Are the Bengals, is this sort of like maybe two ships passing in the night, one that used to be dominant, the other about to head toward that point? Uh, you, you might be right there. Uh, you know, this is a big game for Cincinnati to be able to do that. Obviously, the win against Pittsburgh was huge last week. Uh, you know, Denver came into the Patriots' house. I mean, nobody went up to, to New England in the past years and beat them up there like that. And they got beat there. Now they have to go on the road to a team that is that can score points confidently can believe they can score points every week and that's their you know that's their litmus test this week for them to go do that and, and New England has got their work cut out for them this week all right we're going to step away for a moment here on pro football now go around the league after this break but we'll also hear from T.O.'s head coach about number 81 but first as we break a look at the injury report heading into week four we'll tackle Sean Alexander and Chris Sims in our two minute warning coming up later. You never know who's going to drop by on Chicago Tribune Live. Look behind you. Know, uh, Look behind you as we speak. <laughs> you have a blue furry creature stalking you. Tiger Woods, Reggie Bush, Ozzie Guillen, Michael Barrett. God, you're a big boy. <laughs> Ozzie Smith, Danica Patrick, Dale Talent, Ben Gordon, Bill Walton. I have reached the status of being on cloud 11. Chicago Tribune Live, presented by your Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers, weekdays at 530 on Comcast Sportsnet. Want more than just the score? Then log on to ComcastSportsNet.com. Read analysis from Comcast Sportsnet's experts that you can't find anywhere else. Get up to the second news headlines. See the day's programming lineup. Check out talent bios and watch video clips featuring the latest info on your teams. Plus, sign up for Sports Extra and Sports Blast email alerts that make you the first to know about breaking news. So what are you waiting for? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com right now. Comcast Sportsnet's Action Pack Weekend continues today at 12.30 as the Cubs host the Rockies. At 10.30, get a complete recap of the Bears Seahawks showdown on U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. It's an Action Pack Weekend only on Comcast Sportsnet. Every Monday, catch the Bears press conference on Comcast Sportsnet. Hear what Lovey Smith has to say about the previous game and preview the upcoming weekend's matchup. Don't miss the Bears press conference every Monday at 5, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back. It is time now for our two-minute warning. We begin with Baldy. Chris Sims had his spleen removed 
after last week's game. So who's the quarterback in Tampa Bay? Well, Greasy's gone, and Brad Johnson's gone, and Rich Gannon is doing games. So I guess it's got to be the sixth-round pick, Bruce Gradkowski. He's the next guy in line right now. And you mentioned Gannon. Could Gannon get it done with maybe a couple of weeks of work? Not behind that offense line, Doc. I don't think so. <laughs> hey, Doc, Sean Alexander had more tests done on his foot Wednesday. They revealed what the first test revealed. There is a break in that foot. He was really slow the first three weeks. Is that due to the foot injury? Oh, I would have to say so. Even though it is Bears week, not a bad week <laughs> to get out, but he's a, he's, a, he's a hell of a back. He would play if healthy. Yeah, and I, I agree with you, Doc. I, I think this, uh, this hairline fracture that he's had has been bothering him. It came to a head last weekend. But I'm like you, Doc. I don't think anybody's going to gain yards against this Bears defense this I don't year. So. Baldy, you'll be doing the Cardinals game in Atlanta for Fox this weekend. There was some talk earlier in the week Matt Leinart would get the start for the Cardinals. Now it's going to be Kurt Warner. Who should quarterback that team right now? You know, Denny Green just has to count to five after these games before he gets all emotional. Kurt Warner's a two-time MVP. He's making the plays. He does have to hang on to the ball better. He's fumbled now. He threw three interceptions last week. He's got to take care of the ball. He knows that. I think you got to ride him. You have to ride him at least another week. Yeah, and just another week, and not on the road against an angry group of Falcons, but Baldy. It's just a matter of time, man. It's painful. Yeah. Hey, Doc, Mark Brunel starts the game in Houston last week by completing 22 consecutive passes. Now, is Brunel back, or is it because he was playing the Houston Texans? Well, the Texans are definitely a factor. But I would bet you that you couldn't go out and complete 22 passes to Baldy in the studio. <laughs> you got that right. Complete. You've so, seen me play. So it's tough to do it, but <laughs> it was against the Texans. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not going to temper it by saying it was ten, against the Texans. That's always an impressive feat in this league when they do pay the other guys to stop that from happening. That's right. All right, Doc, Baldy, well done as always. Enjoy your weekend in the NFL. Travel safely. We'll see you guys back here you guys again next week. That's a wrap for Pro Football Now for Brian and Doc. I'm Ron Burke. Thanks for being with us. Have a great week. We'll check you back in next week.